Uh, this is uh, Thursday, September the 12th, uh, class number two. We're doing the Photoshop virtual class. I'm going to share my screen now and we're going to get started. And as always, I always ask you if you can see my screen okay. Just simply raise your hands if you guys are in attendance and you can see my screen. Very good. All right, let's see all of you raise your hands. I want to see everybody participate so I can see everyone's uh, listening and <laughs> paying attention and you're all there. All right, very good. Almost everybody. All right, for those of you who are a little shy, just work on that button. All right. Very good. So we're going to uh, go over just the basics again, because I, Sarah just uh, uh, shared with us how there was, um, I guess, not just her, there was a few other people that couldn't make it last week. So uh, basically, we went over the introduction of the course, uh, all the particulars that pertain to the virtual class. This is your only virtual class that you're going to have this semester. Unless some teachers decide to do it for whatever reason, sometimes there's situations that happen and they can, I'm sure they can deliver it online. But this became the new norm for us, as you know, during the pandemic, uh, we had to switch like on the dime to transfer all our material to an online delivery. It was challenging because none of us were prepared to do that. Ever since then, it's been actually working out really well. Uh, the quality of projects, if not got better, okay, with for my students, and we didn't really skip a beat doing it this way. Um, I do prefer to teach in person, as I do teach the other classes in person. I teach the UX UI class. I teach the web development uh, class as well. We do some of the other graphic design stuff there. So it is um, it is a fun delivery to do it in person, but online is just as fun. If anything, I mean, we get to be in the comfort of our own homes or offices, and you know, we still get the work done. So we went over the actual uh, course outline. These are the main links for the course. So just again, those of you who are first time joining us, Adobe Photoshop, this is your course code, GDPW112RNA. You guys are section A, I believe. This is your virtual class link. So you click on this every Thursday morning. You join us here for the session. This is a YouTube channel. So every time we finish a class, I do upload the YouTube um, or the video on YouTube. It's the best way to deliver the video. I've tried other methods before. We did have a virtual video um, channel set up through Blackboard, but they discontinued that. So they left me with no choice but to use the YouTube platform, and it's been working really well. I can just hear some noises in the background. So if I can ask you to mute your microphones, please. Uh, when I'm conducting the class, I don't mind you interrupting me and asking a question because sometimes I can't see your hand go up. So that's all good. If you have a question, just, just say, hey, excuse me or whatever. Um, but if you can just mute your mics, because then um, this way you won't, we won't get disrupted with the sound quality. And those of you that still have your hands up, you can lower them now. That's good, too. All right. Perfect. So as I mentioned before, this was the YouTube channel that I created. Uh, it's been happening for like, you know, probably well, almost two years now. So I do have uh, a lot of these videos up there. Our, have, our channel is going to be different, of course. Every class is individual. We do change the material from time to time. I do have a bigger cohort this semester. So that means, um, you know, there'll be maybe maybe different exercises, different assignments and, and projects and stuff. But nonetheless, it's all the same with the rubric that we have set up here. If you do click on that channel, you, you'll get directed to it. There's one video already up there. I have 50 views already, which is more than the class number for. So some of you, maybe some other people saw it as well that were in the previous Photoshop class. Uh, so this is uh, a good way for us to communicate the channels. Um, I'm going to sound like a YouTuber now, like and subscribe, because when you do that in the upcoming videos, you will get you will get them more frequently showing up on your on your notifications. And also you'll be more primed to join our other videos. So do do that that stuff. You know, it just helps us communicate better. 
and then um, you're going to see other videos here. Like after this class, give me some time to do this because I have to process the video. I have to go through YouTube's um, licensing re um, regulations and, um, you know, filtering uh, protocols and whatnot. And once that's all, you know, uh, approved, I can then upload the video. So it does take me a little bit of time, but I don't mind doing it. It, it is for a class and I've been doing it since. OK, so this is your channel. You access it by simply clicking here. And this is your cloud subscription with Humber. So make sure again, if you're new to the course and you haven't done this yet, click on this link and get the software for a very low discounted price. And again, I'm going to do this one more time. I promise I'm not going to keep re reviewing this every time, but it's important. This is our second class, $175 for the whole year instead of paying, I think, 30 or $40 as a student. Never mind being a professional, you pay 200 for the month. I know a corporation I used to work with, our license fee was $234. So you pay this for one year. That's all, all the expenses you need for the whole semester, not just for my class, but also for your page layout class, for your topography class, for your digital drawing class. Of course, this one is the digital imaging class. The web class, I don't think it's necessary, but if you have do have a program called Dreamweaver. It's a very good web application right here. And so you could venture into that later on in terms of doing your HTML websites. So it does cover a lot of, lot of ground. After Effects, of course, is known for video editing. And Adobe Premiere um, is, again, for video editing. I'm going to go back to After Effects. It's more like for video effects. So a lot of the professional industry uses that program to create all the effects that you see on movies and television. There was other programs in the past that took the lead when it came to these uh, effects, but lately it's been Adobe all the way. Adobe did maintain their presence in the creative industry, and now they're kind of dominating uh, the video industry, the graphic design industry, advertising, uh, most industries, except the UX UI, because it used to be, used to be Adobe um, you know, XD, but apparently since they didn't acquire Figma, Figma it's all its own independent um, corporation and company that runs the UX UI department. But I thought for, you know, for a while that Adobe was going to corner that market as well. And who knows, maybe one day they will acquire them. They offered them like $12 billion and they said no. I mean, you know, $12 billion is not a small amount of money. So something's happening there. We'll see what happens later. But most of the programs you'll get for that price is all the main ones. And that's more than enough. OK, so it's a really good deal. Please get it. One more note of um, caution. Please make sure you use your Humber credentials. I think it's Humber Mail. OK, like Humber Mail, whatever your Humber Mail is. Make sure you log in with that email account to download the programs. I encountered two, stu two students yesterday in my other class who couldn't do it. And the reason was, again, they used their, their personal email. And one of them used their N number at Humber.ca. I think you have to do Humber mail instead of Humber.ca to get this done. So just be careful with these little details and then you'll get the software. OK, what else is important that we talked about last week? Pretty much um, the ba the basic. Well, there's my biography, of course. My name is Milorad Eftoski, for those who haven't met me before teaching for over 20 years. I've been industry professional for just about 25 years, and I've been teaching a little more lately, more in the past 10 or 15 years. So I do enjoy delivering this, um, these sessions in the classroom and online, of course. I do have my own company called Creative Group, and I do uh, I run a couple of web platforms as well. Might as well show you some of them actually here. So, um, so Creative TV, this is a well, basic website, but we do run digital signage across a lot of these famous restaurants like Boston Pizza, Pharmacies, All Star, Smoke and Roadie, Don Francesco, Feed It Forward, just some of those smaller pubs, some of them bigger. We run advertising screens and we do a lot of digital marketing. So we I run that I run that operation as well. And of course, I have the Creative TV with a K and with a C. So in case you Google it or whatever, it captures both of them. Uh, my company is called Creative Group. Again, this is just a simple website I put up. Um, it's time to an update soon. As soon as I get time, I will have to update it, but it's been around for a while. And it does uh, 
have also Meet the Elite magazine we used to run before. Uh, this is the creative TV umbrella we have with uh, digital advertising services. We do stuff for the real estate market as well. Like we print a lot of folders and a lot of different cards and stuff, signs, uh, some of creative work that we have here. Uh, these are just thumbnails, um, stuff we've done for various magazines. These are my platforms. So I do have like a dental business directory. A lot of my creative business in the past five years or maybe 10 has been geared towards the dental industry. We do a lot of marketing with suppliers and other companies. And this is how I run my platform here. And then we have... Um, and the Macedonian yellow pages, okay, because that is my background. And we used to do the, I started doing the yellow page directory book like in 2001. So I do remember doing these printed books and we used to deliver them to um, different business establishments. So from this, we created, you know, different platforms and directories basically. Just to show you my memberships here, uh, the amount of businesses that I do have on one of these platforms, I got, I got 15,000 members in these platforms. So it's growing nicely. Uh, it is a free platform, mind you. So I'm, I'm, I don't have a private jet just yet, but who knows, maybe one day. I don't know if I'm going to get a private jet, but whatever. Um, but it's good to have uh, these memberships, all legitimate businesses join this huge platform. The other one I have is called Canadian Made Products. This is another platform that I've, I started this during the pandemic to help the small businesses establish their online presence. So a lot of these businesses do promote Canadian products and services. I have a lot of American companies and other companies that are not Canadian. So I have to really like start filtering them out. It's quite laborious to run three different platforms um, since I'm doing this all on my own. And this one has like 5,000 members. So I got to rank up the numbers on that one a bit. Um, so yeah, besides that stuff, we do printing, we do web design, we do UX, UI design, of course. I do have some UX, UI projects, of course, I haven't loaded up here, but it's mostly teaching delivery as well. This is my creative team. Uh, I still have these professionals working with me. So we do have a good team going forward. Uh, Tiku does our very high-end video production. Um, he works for Marvel and other big companies and stuff. Aileen does my sales and marketing. Christopher is my nephew, so he does some of the graphic design stuff as well on the side. Uh, Kyle's my print expert, print specialist. That's myself as well. And Keith is a very famous author and a music producer. So we do have a good team of different professionals that join together and work cohesively. So that's a little bit about myself. I didn't really get to talk about myself a lot last class, so I got a chance to do it today. Um, yeah, so besides that, I, I like to teach, of course, as you know, I'm here at Humber College and I do some other stuff as well. And, uh, you know, I mean, how much more things can I do, right? But right now, my main focus is the dental directory because it is a huge platform and I like to really grow this business. It's like an all, all dental platform that's going to help uh, patients and businesses alike. All right, so enough about me. Back to the class here. This is our YouTube channel, okay? Subscription, we went over uh, class modules. This is where all the class modules will be located. So now we have uh, module one, intro to Photoshop. You're going to have this available now to see because I'm going to activate each one at a time. I don't want to activate all of them because then it becomes overwhelming for you and you're going to go through that from the modules for no reason. Maybe I'll do it one beforehand so you can kind of get ahead of the curve if you like. So we did this one last week. These are your Photoshop tutorials. For those of you who want some extra additional help outside the classroom, you can also go to the Adobe or Creative Cloud website and get some expert tutorials on the subject, which is good. They do have some nice um, tutorials, very nicely done. So I always encourage students to, you know, learn more stuff outside the class. We can, we can only cover so much, of course. I mean, we have you know, 14 classes. And to be honest with you, we are covering the important stuff, but there's the miscellaneous little things that always come up and there's just a thousand ways to do one thing basically, right? So it's good to learn. The more you learn, the better, as they say. Uh, yeah, YouTube is good as well. I've seen some nice YouTube tutorials out there. Um, I find a lot of them maybe not as, you know, comprehensive or they don't cover some stuff, but in terms of getting the actual specific knowledge on something very very unique 
you can definitely resort to YouTube as well. So, you know, there's so much resources now, whereas when I first started doing this field in graphic design in the late 90s, uh, we didn't have too many resources. The internet wasn't as it is today, of course, and we had to resort on a lot of textbooks. Yes, I said textbooks and CDs and DVDs. That's the stuff we used to use and learn. Let's say Photoshop had like a plugin library we used, to, we used to download from a CD onto the software. And then we would use those plugins to get some Photoshop effects to work like filters and other things. Whereas now it's all part of the program already. You don't have to download anything external. There's still things, of course, you can get, but that's for more like expert professional type of um, implementation. Exercise one, we did conduct last week. Um, this was the actual uh, example of it. We did an abstract exercise. If you download this, you can see what we did. We did all this from scratch. So I wanted to basically primarily focus on the Photoshop basics and how to utilize the program to create something from nothing from a blank canvas, utilizing selections and fills. I think at the end we encapsulated everything with like a, a filter effect. We did, we did a twirl and I believe the result was something like this, just to show you here. Right, this was the finished result. Then we started with uh, just the basics and stuff. So it was a nice way to get you to introduce you to the application and to show you how we can do some nice abstract creative design. I think this was an NFT design we did. And the joke was to sell it for, for a lot of money, right? Because NFTs used to be really, really, really um, high in demand at one point until the market got flooded and it became a little too saturated and stuff. But a lot of the students use Photoshop to make some NFTs as well. Um, this is your layers.zip file that we're going to utilize in the upcoming weeks. For now, we're utilizing the selections. Okay, this is your selections folder. So I'm going to ask you to um, download this, um, this stuff from the resources. So this is module two. We're going to start this today. Um, I just don't want to skip anything. This is the abstract exercise. Please don't uh, confuse the exercise with this exercise. I don't know why it's called exercise. I mean, honestly, it should be called an assignment. So we're going to call this an assignment right here. It does confuse people. So we're going to call this assignments. Assignment one. OK, this way it's a little more. This is abstract exercise one. Actually, this is the exercise. Never mind. This is the exercise. It's okay. I'm halfway through my coffee here. Just sometimes the names do mix up here. Sometimes they conflict with one another. This is an exercise example. So maybe I can call it example class example. There we go. So this is an example that I just showed you, and this is the actual, uh, and I think this might be an older example because I had to transfer my course from last semester to this semester, so just bear with me here. This is, um, might be not the exact one, but you'll get the idea basically. And this was the abstract exercise challenge. I like to do this from time to time, maybe not every week, but whenever I feel like uh, maybe to interact with everyone in the classroom and you guys can actually partake in this challenge. And the challenge is just to upload your own creativity. So I can see here a lot of you did uh, manage to do what I asked you to do last week. Some of you um, send me a message with Blackboard. And yes, by the way, to communicate with me, another important thing, communication is very important. Messages, this is how you send me messages. You go to the messages tab, and you message me through here, okay? So I want you to just use that. And if you do send me a message, make sure you send the email one as well. So if you do a new message, make sure you send an email copy as well. In case I do miss it, I can catch it with my email and check my messages with Blackboard. This should uh, go across all the other instructors that you have for the other courses, unless they have a more of a different preferences than myself, but this is what we use at Humber, and this is our way of communicating with the students. So make sure you use this messaging tool. Okay, very good. So then,
right? So this is the abstract challenge. So a lot of you did message me and tell me, hey, I didn't get a chance to get the software to get the abstract challenge in time. And I responded to you by saying, don't worry about it because this is just a challenge. It's, you, this is not being graded. What's being graded is the actual assignment. This is why I was confused with the other file here to rename it. The assignment is you have to hand that in because it is it's it's worth marks. I think it's only three points, but they do add up and there's like five of those throughout the semester. I sprinkled one every other week. So you have like, I think, five different assignments. You have two projects and you have two collaborate projects as well. So you may have like nine different rubrics that will equal to your total grade. OK, so make sure you account for all of them. But this these challenges are just for me to make sure you're partaking. And I think there's a small mark with your participation because it's an online course. So these challenges do kind of uh, do matter. So I, I don't want you to think they don't matter at all but they're not weighted with marks, okay? That's what I meant to say. So this is all of you that did submit the latest ones. So it's nice to see everybody. I got 20 responses, very good. I like to get that number to the full class number, of course, but 20 is a good number. So it's nice to see everybody participating. So uh, I can see here, Prem's uh, a beautiful design. Danielle's very nice design as well. Nice abstract there. We got Jazz Meets. And we have Joseph. Might as well do my roll call since I'm doing it now. Jagtar. Very nice. And Gurav. Nicely done. With Eric. A little different. I don't see the twirl on this one. But I like the color combinations and different uh, uses of selections and stuff. Right. And Arshdeep. Very interesting. Quite abstract, of course, with different uh, different selections and different elements of design. And 4M, I like the multiple uh, twirl examples that she did. Very good. So it wasn't just one. She did a few of them around the table there. Very nice. Ashish, very good. Kind of the twirl looks very nice with the, all the colors there as well. Alicia or Alicia, I should say. You can correct me if I say it wrong. I don't see the twirl filter, but I can see a different, I think the glass filter was applied on this one. So it came out kind of nice as well with limited color, of course. And we have Kamal, very nicely done there as well. So you don't have to necessarily do the twirl effect. That was just the thing that I added. Even the other ones come out okay as well. And we got Pauline here, nicely done. And Benjamin, very good. And Yulia. All right, nice and bright. And Prabjot. Very good. Nice twirl in that one in the middle. Same again here with Jessica. Nicely done. And Patty. Very good. I like the, the vertical twirl there distribution. And Allegheny. Nicely done. Good use of white space all around there. And I think I have one as well. All right, not bad. Okay, so I'd like to see this happen more frequently as we do more challenges to see how you follow me along with the with the class exercise. Now, you're not going to do it the same time that I'm doing it. Some of you, I do recommend you do, because um, when I teach the stuff in class, uh, basically it's, it's hands-on. So as I'm showing you how to do something, I want to make sure you know how to do it. So I'm watching you do it as I show you how to do it, right? If you do a second screen, it's better. You can watch me on one screen and follow me on the next one. And I'm going to try to pace myself to a good, um, you know, speed. So this way you can follow me along. If you can't, you can always watch the video later. So don't worry if you do this on the same day. You just you can always submit it afterwards. If you haven't done it, don't worry. Like this is honestly just like a good introductory thing so don't feel obligated in case you're late or you you know missed your flight or you didn't come on time last week so don't worry if you didn't do this if you have great if you haven't catch the next one okay what i want you to focus however is on the assignments so the assignment is down here okay if you scroll down i should go to student view so i can get a better preview to see what you see I have a different view than you have there. So here you have your class exercises and assignments. Okay. So this is the 
color abstract exercise. I should call this. This is the one I wanted to rename, actually. So this is the one that you got to hand in. OK. So this is an assignment. I'll rename it just so kind of we're clear on the different terminology here, assignments and exercises. I like to keep them separate exercises, although they're graded at some point. I think I don't want to mix up the ones in class with the ones you're handing in. So I'm going to call these assignments and I'll keep calling those um, ones, the group participation ones, exercises. OK, and the main ones will be called projects. So there. Professor. Yes. There's an easy way to uh, check your assignments if they're graded. Instead of opening all this, if we directly go to the grade book, it will just show you the assignments which are grade, which are to be graded. Just if we click on the grade book. No, I, I, I'm, I'm aware of that. Thank you for sharing it. But what I wanted to also show you is how to run the my setup here. But absolutely, 100%, I agree with you. And thank you for chiming in on that. The grade book is a great way to check where everything is. Absolutely. OK, thank you. OK, so you can check here your exercises, your projects. Everything that's up to date is in the grade book. OK. Yeah, I was thinking okay. because if we go into the like, I know the, it's maybe, it yeah, maybe it's easier. Yeah. No, that's fine. So thank you for for chiming in on that. Absolutely. So the grade book is the more direct way to access these things. Absolutely. But I want you to also be able to navigate through the content. So I'm, since I'm doing this, I didn't really want to jump all over the place here. So that's why I was kind of focusing on this for now. OK. So this is in case you want to look at some other future assignments, if it doesn't show up here, you should see it here in this area here. And this is your main project. So everything is kind of situated under your content. OK, and then you have your resources here. OK, so the resources that I want you to have is your layers and selections. So if you haven't done this last week, please download it now. So we have some of the sample files today. We're going to start um, the exercise using these resources. So I'm going to ask all of you to download this file here. OK, and and just like uh, sorry, I didn't catch the name of the student that mentioned earlier. Uh, yes, the other tabs are definitely good to explore. I like the calendar also like my favorite is this one because here you can have look due dates and look at this. It shows you all the due dates that are coming up with all your assignments and you can do this for all your classes. So absolutely this these other tabs are helpful, of course, but the content should have everything there as well. So I want you to get familiar with everything so you're more diverse, I guess, in all these things. You have a schedule, you have due dates. I even like to do this. I like to switch it to month view. And you can see where everything is due through the whole table. So you can see here, well, this one's due, you know, today, which is the 12th that's circled, the color abstract exercise. Okay. So if you click on that, then you'll have the actual, uh, there's the exercise here. And then you can read the actual, if you click on the attempts, you can see the actual instructions for it. You can also, um, the announcements, I, I don't have any announcements yet. Usually I do a welcome announcement or something, so I do apologize for not doing that. It was a short week, by the way, so didn't really get a chance. But important announcements I'm going to place there. You should get an email with the announcements telling you whatever, maybe, hey, uh, the YouTube channel is up and running now, or we have something happening. So this is the announcements that you should receive from this class. There's the discussions as well, which is the abstract um, abstract exercise challenge. So everything I went over here is broken up into these sections as well. And the grade book, of course, as we talked about earlier, is a very good way to keep track of all your stuff in a nutshell. So this would be a go to place 100%. So there's your uh, color abstract exercise and there's your movie poster. This one's due in October. So we're going to talk about this a little bit because it's something we should consider going forward. All right, and then you have messages and you have groups. Uh, I'm not going to use groups until we have group assignments and stuff, so you don't have to worry about that. But all these other tabs are there for you to utilize. OK. All right. Um, so this is student view. I'm not in my view, so you can see everything here. So everything is pretty, pretty um, simple, I guess, in, in terms of the way it's navigated. I've used other platforms before. Uh, Blackboard's, you know, it wasn't as easy as this, user-friendly. It was very 
hard to manage and utilize. They made it better than it was a few years ago. So they always make improvements and upgrades to the soft to the system. Okay, so definitely you should, you know, um, kind of get familiar with everything. All right, what else? I think we're there for now. Just download the resources. Okay, make sure you download the layers and selections. Uh, these are Photoshop PDF tutorials. There's some extra goodies I wanted to give you. So this is like your welcome package. You don't have to really buy any books and stuff. This has these are older. They're CS6 tutorials, but but they're well well applicable to even to today's um, standards. Of course, otherwise I wouldn't give them to you. So they're very good methods to learn, and we're gonna learn some of them here too. Of course, they're just older tutorials. All right. So that's your resources main projects, class assignments, the modules, of course. And now you have access to two modules. So this one's done. We're going to go to the second one. The second one shows folder is empty. Oh, there's not that thing is there. OK, I think I have to um, once we download. So what you want to do is this. Maybe I can just move it there for you. I'm going to move the selections file in here so you can access it. OK, this way it's not empty. I don't like it being empty like that. So we'll move it there for you. OK, so this way it's easier because the resources is here. So I will actually do that right now. And to do that, I have to exit my student view and go to my. Um, instructor view and then do it that way. So what I'm going to do, ask you do this anyways right now. So go to resources, download layers and selections. I want you to download the selections.zip file. So you're going to click here and download that one. Go to the desktop or wherever you feel comfortable downloading your stuff in. And then uh, we're going to put it here. So you have under class modules. Under class number two. Oh, it's hidden. That's why nothing's there. <laughs> All right. So the selections melon head. I'd rather show you this after because I don't want you to see the finished result just yet. It's one of those things that we got to work at. So I'm just going to upload the selections zip file. I know it's too redundant, but. I wanted to keep it uh, simple here. Let me just extract this one so you can have a more specific folder to go by. So we follow the modules. So it's not confusing for some of you. So this is the one we're doing today. This is the one we're going to start next week. So this one here, I'm going to create a zip file for this one. So we're going to go ahead and um, compress it. So this is the file for module number two. And then I'm going to I'm going to show you the other hidden. I have hidden files. This was hidden. That's why it's empty. But there is a selections melon head uh, file that I have here. And there is a melon selections exercise that I have here. I'm just going to see. Oh, this is something you upload. So I will have you do the same thing. This will be visible. So today you'll do another. You're going to do another. Um, challenge okay so, um, another challenge exercise the melon selection so you will have something like this that's going to show up uh here soon don't let this scare you now i know <laughs> we got the halloween ahead of us there um this will this will be an exercise that'll teach you how to make selections and this is very fun and a good way to learn how to apply all these different selections that photoshop has to offer and what better way to learn it to have some fun right so i've always um I believe this exercise was very well constructed and I've done other ones in the past, but this one by far, it's my favorite one for beginners. OK, uh, so this one also is this is like a Photoshop file, I think. So I'm going to upload this one here for you now so you can access to it. All right, so you should see this right now. So it's called um, L1 selecting start. Okay, so this is the file. Yeah, I would just leave it alone, okay? 
So this is the zip file here. So if you download this one, it's more specifically catered to today's um, exercise. However, as I mentioned earlier, if you download this uh, whole thing here, it's going to cover you for, I think, up to week five, because this has all the files that we need for all the lessons. OK, so you can kind of do that one or you can just go by the modules, which is a lot easier for you to configure. OK, so if you go to module two right now, it should not be empty. You should have a, a selections exercise a community bubble that you'll see, which we're going to. It's like the challenge that we did last week. We'll do another one with this one just to get you more in tune and more participating into the virtual class. And we'll do have an exercise for us to start with. OK, so this one, if you want to download it, Please go ahead right now. Just click on this and you should be able to download the file. Let me go to student view because sometimes I need to do that to see what you see. We got to switch between students and instructor view because as you saw there, uh, sometimes we miss things. That folder was empty. We got to make sure everything is there. So there's module two, basic and intermediate selections. And there's your file right now. So nothing's empty anymore, okay? So every week we're going to have some stuff in there for you. So this is the um, challenge and this is the exercise. And this is the zip file. So just download this one. And after I'm going to ask you to access this, the, the exercise channel and participate into uploading your version of your creation of the melon exercise. OK. Sorry, I don't know if I'm the only one, but I don't have access yet to that. In the module number two, it says, oops, something went wrong. Oh, really? Can, can you log out and log back in to the Blackboard? Uh, okay. okay, sure. Yeah, sometimes sometimes that seems to work most of the time. So um, yeah, please do that. Let me see. Well, when you guys are talking, I want to see your names too. So who was I chatting with earlier? Um, Sarah, I guess, me. Sarah, okay, and before that, somebody else was talking about um, the module two being empty. Was the student there? That's Prem. Prem, okay, good. All right, like, I want to put the name to the voice so I can, when I meet you in person, I can see you guys, what you guys look like, so we can meet face to face. And do upload your picture here, so I want to see your face, so I know what you know. This way, when I see you in the hallway in the school or when I meet you guys in person, I can remember who you are. So do have your, you know, profile so we can see each other. And then, um, yeah, it would be good. See, some of you already have it. Some of you, a lot of you don't. So put your picture there so we can we can see each other. All right. Um, so what was, Sarah, did you fix your issue there with the module two? Yes, I did. So we need to download the l1 selecting a start zip yeah that's right okay, okay thank you okay. you're very welcome so every class i'm gonna have something for you to do like last week we started with nothing scratch okay we just did an example and i didn't have anything for you to download we just did everything from the beginning today i'm gonna ask you to download something to work with so today's material will consist of this file here which is called l1 selecting start so i'm just gonna be very very uh, frank and straight up and tell you, hey, just get this file and let's start with. So I'm going to give you the instructions. This is what I'm here for. I don't want this thing to do its own thing right without me. I mean, we, we still I still need to facilitate my class. So I'm going to give you instructions on what to do as we do it. Because it did have to have an online class I used to teach at the Toronto Film School, and I had to make it so, you know, descriptional that students could do this on their own. Basically, I don't even have to be there, but that's you know, I still had to mark projects and, and do some stuff with them. And I did have a lot of videos uploaded. So this is different, of course. This is an online delivery, which means I have to still, you know, deliver the course. So this is why I'm going to give you instructions on what to do. So it's not so, you know, point blank. All right. So download this file, please. And let's get started. Any questions? Does everybody else have any issues with uh, this this module here or anything else for that matter? Okay, very good. Just gonna see here. Um, can I ask you guys what room are you guys in again? I know you told me last week. Was it 140? Yes, it's 140. J140. 
G140. And you have you have Macs in there, right? The big Macintosh computers. Yeah. And there's yes. 30 there's 36 of them in the classroom. Or 30, I think 30 there something, is right? one Windows and others all are Mac. Okay. Yeah, all right. Very good. And you're not there. You're not there on uh, Wednesdays, right? No, only on Tuesdays from 9 to 2.20 or something. Again, Friday also the same time. That's all. Yeah, so I don't get to see you. Wednesdays I'm there. I'm in 1.32. So, okay, maybe one day I'll stumble across. I'll come by. I'll pop by and see you guys. No worries. So are you going to give us any class next semester? Next semester, I should teach you the, the UX you UI class. Yes, I teach that class as well. We used to, yeah, we used to do UX UI. It's a user experience, user interface class. It used to be called user interface. I used to deliver that class using Adobe XD. Uh, last semester, we did a little bit of XD, mostly Figma, which is a prototyping apps. So we do app prototypes and we start up with websites and then we do apps and you come up with some really creative um, UX UI projects and exercises in that one. That one's going to be in person. Oh, so nice. Could, so cool. Yeah. So I should see you uh, for that one. We're going to be in, I think, the uh, graduate uh, school. You know the graduate school? Yeah. IGS? Yeah. No, the IGS, the International Graduate School. It's a young and blur. It's like in the heart of downtown. So it's kind of nice uh, there. Okay. Okay. So we're going to meet there next semester, right in January. And hopefully the weather is going to be okay. And there'll be too many snowstorms and interruptions, but we should be all good. <laughs> also, Professor, is there a possibility that we can connect our uh, laptop to a larger screen in any classroom at the North Campus for this online class? Um, wh what do you mean? Are you in the class right now, you're saying, or you're at home? No, no, no. I'm at home, but I would want uh, like a larger screen where I can uh, sit for this class. Larger screen. Like so a computer like, lab or something. Right. Well, right now, this is the way we're delivering it, right? We, we, okay. We can't, yeah, we can't change it because it's the way it's set up. Most people want to do this. Like, that's just the way that we have it. Uh, the reason is there was other sections that wanted to take this. Photoshop's a very popular course, so they wanted to have other sections basically come in here because if it's online, there's no limitation of how many people I can have. I can have 100 students, basically. Okay. okay? So that's why they wanted to keep it this way. The other classes, no, but this one, they we decided to go for it, right? So this is what we do. Did, okay. Um, did All you right. mean, uh, sorry, but did you mean, is there a space at Humber where you could go and work and hook and, and follow this class? like a yeah. 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 And hook your computer into a larger screen. Yeah. So you have to see, yeah, if you see what's available, Prem, I don't see a problem. You can definitely do that. Okay. Uh, you just have to maybe walk into the campus one day and then see what's available. If you see a classroom open, you can go in there and do your thing. I always see students, sometimes students from other classes, they ask me permission if they can stay and do their work. I don't have a problem unless they're not sitting where my students are sitting. They're sitting in a spot in the corner somewhere where no one's going to bother them. No one's bothering nobody. I'm okay with that. So okay, if you find out, a, yeah, a specific class that has large screens, right? It Correct. Would have to, yeah, I, I, and yeah. I don't, I don't know if that's if every room has screens. I, I have no idea. Yeah, one forty probably does. One forty, the the classroom that you're in, if that's available, maybe you can use that one. It's got the nice big twenty eight inch Mac monitors. Yes. Uh, there's another one, J one one five. That's a good one as well. There's also J118. If you go further down across the hallway there, when you where you are, but there's um, you know, when you go to the food court on the other side, you just go right through. Uh, and then there's another section there. Just just remember there's a J115, J118. Those are also classrooms that we used to have available for you and for the web production class that we used to teach. And if you see some other classrooms, you know, you can use those as well if they're available, right? Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, so if that helps you, by all means, all of you can 
utilize the space available because you are Humber students and you have access to the campus. You can pretty much, you know, unless you're not supposed to or allowed to go somewhere, then that's different. But if it's kind of within our J wing, I don't see a problem, right? All right, so let's go ahead and start now. Any other questions before I begin? All right, so let's begin and I'm going to ask you again to um, go to uh, the uh, module two, download the selection start file and let's get started. So in that file, you should get uh, this um, zip thing that you get to unzip. Uh, double clicking on the Mac should extract it on the PC. I believe you have to right click and extract it that way, because if you double click, it might not let you open the files. So make sure you extract it first and then you have the contents folder. Once you open the contents folder, you have two files in there. One's a Photoshop file, one's a PDF. The reason why I stick to these exercises is because they do work really well. They do have step by step instructions. OK, uh, so they basically tell you the objective of this of this exercise. I mean, it is class two, so uh, I did want to kind of, you know, take it step by step. But at the same time, I wanted to, you know, kind of keep the momentum going and teach you some more important things about the program. Last week was a very good introductory class where we did stuff with selections and colors and fills and saving documents and files and stuff. Today we're going to take it to the next level. We're going to work with images today. Images and selections, which is the crucial uh, foundation of Adobe Photoshop. So the objective is to select parts of an image using a variety of tools, repositioning selections of marquees, deselecting selections, because you see selecting and deselecting is just as important. Because you, you, you know, if you have one over the other, it does limit you to do certain things. Moving and duplicating selections, constraining the movement of a selection, choosing areas of an image based on proximity or color of pixels, adjusting a selection with the arrow keys. That's the directional keys on your keyboard. Um, adding to and subtracting from selections. We did a little bit of this last week, but this week we're going to kind of advance it a little further and see how important these methods are. Rotating, scaling, and transforming selections, very important. Combining selection tools, this is what the experts like to do. So now we're looking at intermediate level of utilizing selections. And lastly, we're going to crop the image, which a lot of people like to use Photoshop for cropping images and getting the right results. So all this exercise here, we will cover all these important aspects of utilizing selections in Photoshop. And I'll tell you right now, without selections, there's no Photoshop. So we're learning like the ground base. It's like it's like a car with no tires. OK, it's not going to drive far. So that's why we're learning the most important part of the program is selections. And then, of course, we're going to get into layers and then we're going to get into some other Photoshop principles and techniques. And once you get uh, grasp selections and layers, everything else will just flow naturally. Then we can start doing websites in Photoshop and prototypes and collages and posters and everything else that comes in hand. But these are the foundational rules and the techniques that we need to learn. And these exercises, I handpicked them, and over the years, I perfected them to help students get a pure understanding of the program. All right, so let's get started. First, we're going to open. So this basically, I'm not going to read this to you, but it's good for those of you that want to follow steps. We used to print these and give them to students. Uh, now, you know, you can print it if you like, but for now, you can just look at it this way. This is how we start the file. We open the PSD file, which I provided for you, which is right over here. This is the file we're going to open. Let me open this uh, properly by double clicking on it. So it's like an actual PDF. I should plug my laptop as well. I mean, it's such a nice day today. I felt like doing this in my backyard. You know, they have a my neighbors put up a new fence. They build a new house beside me, so it's kind of cool. And it's more private. I could use my backyard, but then my internet was going to be probably, uh, although I do have like the highest speed here, whatever Bell or Rogers has to give me, but it's still, uh, you know, it's different when you're 
outside the walls of the house in the modem. It might not reach that far. It is a nice day, though. Okay, here we go. So we do have um, the starting point. The head is basically selecting rectangular marquee tools, draw a rectangle, command J. I'm going to do all this with you, uh, like live, so we're going to see how it's done. I might not do it exactly in the same sequence, but more or less it's going to be right on what you see here. <clears throat> the mouth will be the, the tomato. Command J is a very good shortcut. If you have a PC, the substitute of command is control. So whatever you see command J, for you it's going to be control J, which what it does is grabs the selection and puts it on a separate layer. And yes, we're going to learn layers too with this exercise. So basic layers and basic intermediate selections. Then there's the eyes, the nose, the bow tie, the ears, the hat, and finally we're cropping the image and saving it as a Photoshop file. And I want you to save it as a as a JPEG and upload it on the on the challenge exercise channels to, to see everybody's partaking in the exercise. Okay. All right, very good. So basically now we're going to um, start. So this is a good little handout. I'm going to have this for the next few weeks as we're diving into the program and learning new things. And later on, it's going to be more like more like instruction based video. Follow me kind of thing. But this is a very, very good exercises. All right, so let's go ahead and open this file. Considering you already have Photoshop, otherwise you can't really do this. Let's double click and open this right into the software. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to just reflect back on the Teams channel and just see how many of you do have uh, Photoshop ready to go and you're following me along because I do want you to follow me along. Even if you don't have a second screen, you can always switch back and forth and just hear my voice and follow voice instructions. And of course, from time to time, look at visual instructions as well because they're equally important, I think. So I'm going to zoom in, give you time to catch up. I promise I'll keep my tempo nice and well paced and slow so you can follow me. This is our challenge. We're going to put this thing together. Look, we're going to cover elliptical marquees, lasso, other elliptical marquees, magnetic. Um, uh, this is like different variations of the elliptical marquee. This is the standard one, transforming selections, quick masking, although I'm going to use the quick uh, selection tool instead. I'll save the masks for another lesson. The magic wand, we're going to use the rectangular marquee with the magic wand. For this one, I'll use another tool. This is an older exercise, I would say a few years, but nonetheless, it's still up to date. I, mean, I can't keep up with how fast these guys update their software all the time. Unless it's really, really, really drastically different, I'll switch it. But what I'm going to do is substitute the new tools that they introduced to this exercise. So I can easily say, hey, instead of doing this, let me show you the new tool that just came out. In this case, let's say it's the, it's this one here. It's the... Um, See what these guys are misplacing it now. Like the quick selection tool, for example, or the object selection tool. Um, the object selection tool was new. So this is, was came out just after this exercise. So I'm going to show you how this one works in conjunction with this example here. So I can always kind of, you know, spruce it up and keep it up to date using the new tools. So not to worry. This is your standard marquee tools. So you have the elliptical marquee, rectangular marquee. These haven't changed since 30 years ago. Yes, I said 30 years ago. That's nothing changed with this one. Uh, the lasso, the magic wand, the polygonal, the magnetic. These are also, you know, they go back since the early days of Photoshop. And yes, they're still quite useful because they are the fundamental selection tools. The new one that I like to point out that came out this year, like recently, the selection brush tool. OK, this is a really new one. This kind of works like a quick mask tool. So I'm, I can't wait to share this with you and to exploit ways that we can use it. So this is like the new one that came out this version of 2014. All right. What else? Uh, this is your other selection tool. So basically, these are all the selection tools up here. This one here, the L. If you press L on the keyboard, you will alter between all the different uh, lasso selection tools in this case. And I guess they put the selection brush tool in the lasso category. The M is the marquee. 
there's also the single row and the single column. Um, I'll be honest with you, they're not very popular, but you could use them and I, I could show you ways you can integrate them as well, okay? And then there's this one here. This is your, the wands. The magic wand was like the primary tool for this. This was the only tool actually available. Then they came up with the quick selection tool and they kind of put it on top of the magic wand as a, you know, subsidiary tool there. And then there's the object selection tool as well, which, which is quite remarkable how this one works. So these are the tools we're going to practice this with this whole exercise right here. And by the end of, you know, when we finish this particular exercise, you will have a good understanding on how to use Photoshop. Like right away, the second week, you'll be able to put this thing together all on your own. All right. So now that I did enough talking and explaining before I start, I want to go back and just see where everyone's at. If you have any questions or if you have any issues, let me see um, how many of you have Photoshop ready to go and you're following me along and everything is perfect. Let's see. So I have a few people that are, keep your hands up, okay? Because I want to see who's left behind. So for those of you that don't have your hands up, I'm just curious, is it is it like you don't have the applications yet or you're just, it's okay if you're, um, even if you're not following me, raise your hand. I just want to know who has the application. So that's more crucial. If you can't follow me, maybe you're in your car, maybe you're at work and you're doing something. You're still watching the video, participating in my class. That's okay. I'm not going to tell you otherwise. Then you can always watch the video later, I guess, or, you know, take notes. But I want to see everybody with the application. So those of you that, a few of you that don't have it, um, maybe reach out to me later and tell me what the situation is. But if you have any technical issues, we do have a, a wonderful IT department that can help you on campus, you can always go there and get your situation sorted out, okay? Maybe it's your account, your email, or something like that. Thank you, you can lower your hands now. All right, so let's begin. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, look at, this is our main primary focus here, this melon fruit. These are fruits and vegetables that we're going to create a collage out of by pasting different elements on top of one another and creating something that can kind of look like a, um, like like a face or this will be the melon head actually that's the way we named it melon head so we're going to exploit different selection tools and make it happen so for that to happen we need to have this extracted first so what i wanted to do was basically um, extract this melon head from this file here and right away, I'm going to get down to the, um, maybe we're going to do it this way. We're going to use the the um, the marquee selection tool, okay? Just to kind of keep it simple. And we're going to go ahead and make a selection of the melon head like this, okay? So we have a basic selection made. And last week, I did this like numerous of times. I went click and drag, click away, click and drag, click away, right? This is, means you have a selection, and if you click away, it means you have no selection. Uh, a selection is the primary source of Photoshop. It's like breathing, okay? Selection is like breathing for humans. Because if you have a selection active in Photoshop, it'll suspend everything else and focus on that selection. It's like the first thing Photoshop, once you make a selection, there's nothing else, uh, you know, trumps the actual uh you know the the motive or the action so selection is the key while the selection's active okay and photoshop now goes okay that's the selection you can go in the selection and you can move the selection like this you can also use the directional keys on your keyboard if you want to get very instrumental and tedious with it you can go down 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 up 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 left like you so you can move it with the directional keys on your keyboard you can also move it with the mouse inside the selection, right? Lots of cool things. You can also resize the selection. Let's say I want to crop it smaller in the selection. You go to select, 
and you can do what's called, and this is new, it came out a few years ago, transform selection. And it was really cool because then you, you don't have to make the selection like three times. You can transform the selection and you can make it really, really close fitted to the actual target. In this case, the melon fruit. Okay. And once you press enter, you're acknowledging that your transformation will take place to the desired bounding box. So you hit enter and there's the new selection. Please don't confuse transforming selections and cropping because they're two different, complete different things. Everything that I'm doing here is under the select menu. See, selection is so important. Photoshop has a menu just for selections as well. All right, so once you have the selection acquired, what I want you to do next is to press, again, I'm going to teach you the shortcut right off the bat. Speaking of shortcuts, I want to, go through the basic ones like command minus command plus this is how you zoom in and zoom out of your environment the space bar always always gives you the hand so you can pan around the document it only works if you're zoomed in so if you're like this you hold the space bar you can move your document around so that's kind of how this works uh, one more thing before we start i know there's so many things in photoshop right uh, one thing is you have to go to window and make sure your workspace is set to essentials default. Now, last week we went over creating our own 2024 Photoshop workspace. But for those of you that are new that missed last week's class, I'm going to just go over it one more time quickly because it's important um, to save a workspace. First, you do this one. So it's default and make sure the tools here on the left are extended to the two column structure i'm not a fan of the one single column i find it hard to follow i know it maximizes space on a small monitor but i mean i have a you know this is a 16 inch macbook pro that i'm using so i'm pretty okay even if your monitor is 15 inches you can still basically um you know use the two columns i don't see a problem with it so just click on this little top left button here and expand it to two columns because no way you can control this area here when it's that small so you got to see this very clearly like fill um, you know foreground background color you know quick mask mode uh, screen mode and things like that right so basically um, um they're, they're sorry. Put yeah could you Please. please remind me how to set up my photoshop uh, window to see all the tools because i'm just seeing the essentials Right. So if you go to window, yeah, no problem. So go to workspace and go to um, reset essentials. If you reset the essentials, it'll look like this. OK. And then I want you to click on the on the left little. I don't know if you can see my cursor here. It's right over here, right to the left here where the little house is, which is the home button. If you click on the little tab, it's going to open the tools into two columns. So you got to be able to see all these tools right here. Thank you. You're very welcome. Speaking of essentials, this is also important. I really, really need to have this visible because this is the properties, all the properties that take place when you have a tool selected, like the selection tool. Look, you have add to selection, subtract from selection, feather selection, the style of selection, uh, you know, select and mask. All these things are important based on the selection category of this tool. Watch when I select the move tool. Then they have the move selection options, alignments, transforming controls, all the things. Look what happens when I press the, the type tool for typography. Okay. When I press the type tool, look, the fonts show up, the style of fonts, the, the font size, the anti-aliasing, the alignment, the colors. All, so this changes based on the tool that you're selecting, okay? So very important you keep an eye out on this and this at the same time. Now, the secondary is your palettes because these palettes are also your, it's like the painter's palette. You choose your colors, your swatches, you got your layers here, your properties, um, all the different things that you need to have. And the properties are also here, although I, I call this the properties palette here. Uh, these are the settings of the properties. This is also another property palette, adjustments, libraries. The most important part, I don't want to overwhelm you the first day. That's why I want to keep it simple. What I would suggest you do is you double click on the color palette, double click on the properties palette, and just keep the layers nice and visible so it's easy for us to see what we're creating in here. 
So I have your layers visible. You can always open these up later, like the properties. We don't need this yet because all the properties we have is up here anyways, okay? Although these are more extended. So we can all do this stuff here, okay? Right, it's called the options now, by the way. Um, these are your options instead of the properties. They're called options because the properties palette, they renamed it differently, okay? So in case you're looking for the help menu, it helps. And yes, the help menu, very important. Let's say you're looking for layers, okay? Layers, okay? So if you click on layers, it shows you everything where it's located if you're looking for in the, in the window application. Very helpful, so it's quite, quite uh, resourceful in terms of looking for anything that you want and you can type it in and you can find it where it's at okay the help menu is very helpful so once you set up your interface like the way i have it you can then save it for next time so you don't have to do this ever again so i'm going to go to window workspace and instead of it used to be called save workspace they took that out you have to go to new workspace because new means you're saving the existing one okay so new workspace I'm going to call this one, um, I'll just call it today's date. So Thursday, September 12th, okay, 2024. That's the name of my workspace. Uh, I don't have to do any panel locations uh, capturing, so I'm going to leave it at that. Hit save. So why am I doing this? Because one day you might, you know, explore different things and, and do this kind of stuff. And not that you'll do this ever, but students, and I've seen a lot of messes before. You know, they, they do all kinds of stuff and the pallets are here and this is over here. And who's going to clean up your mess, right? So the best way to clean it up and put it back to normal is to go here and go to workspace and reset your Thursday, September 12th with, with the one you saved, I guess, the way it was. And it's going to all tidy it up. Okay, I got to get this thing in real life so you can clean my office sometimes. But it works on the application, so that's good for now. Okay, so once you have the workspace set up, you have the selection set up. Right now, what we're going to do is, um, and we have the selections now um, applied. We're going to extract this to a new layer. So the shortcut I wanted to teach you was Command or Control J, or it works the same as copy and paste. Uh, I don't want to skip copy and paste because it's the same thing. So if I hit Control C, Control V, or Command C, Command V on the Mac. Look what I did. I copied and pasted this on a separate layer. If I hide, this is called a visible. If I hide the background layer, what you'll see is the melon head extracted from the original. This is exactly what we're going to do, okay? Now, let me do that one more time. Only this time, I'm going to press Command J, not copy and paste. Command J, what's the difference? There's no difference. It's the same thing. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So Command J is a quick way. It's a one stroke shortcut to copy and paste. That's all. I still like copy and paste. Just kind of makes more sense. People are more familiar with copy and paste because it's a universal shortcut in all aspects of the computer industry. Whether you're using Microsoft Word, you're using a Gmail email, you're sending an email, copy, paste. It works everywhere. It's universal. So you can use a universal standard in Photoshop as well. But because Photoshop is so niche and you know special, you can use a Command J because it does that in one stroke shortcut. So if we do see Command J here in my PDF, that's because that's what they're trying to do is to keep it more in tune with the actual um, file. There it is, okay? So when you see Command J, that's what that means. All right, next. So now notice how I extracted this on a separate layer and I have this one here. So let's go ahead and uh, you can hide and show the layer. I always suggest you show the layer and you're aware of what's happening. And I want you to double click where it says layer one. Be careful where you double click. There's so many tedious things in this program. If you double click here, what's gonna happen is you can open up the layer style palette. Now we don't need this until weeks from now. So don't worry about this, just cancel. If you double click over here, same thing is going to happen. The layer styles will show up. Okay. And again, this is something we'll cover another time. I don't want to get into this yet. But if you double click 
where the little text thing is, like where it says layer one, the little text area. If you double click there, then you get to rename the layer. OK, so it's easier for you to call it, you know, melon head. I'll keep it lowercase here. OK, so that's how you rename the layer. Another way to rename the layer, of course, is if you right click. I'm sure there's a rename layer option somewhere in the menu. This is a sub menu when you right click. This is the sub menu you're going to get. Another menu that you can use with layers is over here. And you can use other options as well. I prefer right clicking. OK, I also prefer double clicking to get things done a lot quicker and more directly. OK, so that's a, your basics about we're not going to get too far into layers today, except copying and pasting selections. But you do have to keep you know, an eye on the layers because that's how we're going to assemble this together using layers and selections. Now, what's more important is you to select the background layer to grab the rest of the items because you see if you stay in this layer there's nothing there except the melon head so how are we going to grab the tomato the pepper the mushroom we can't grab it from that layer we have to grab it from the original layer which is the background layer so you have to get used to the routine or pattern once you copy and paste something you go back to the background layer to get the next thing that's like your home base so you have to go back to the home base to grab the next item. So please remember that it's going to become a routine going forward with this exercise. So you're clicking on clicking on the background layer, okay? And you're going to go to the elliptical marquee tool, all right? And we're going to start with the um, Can I ask with this a question? orange here. Yes, Sorry sure. To interrupt. Sorry to... No problem. Um, so I'm in my layers and. Um... Like if I go back and forth between the, the what we just did, just the melon and the the full screen, it's not changing what is coming up. Yes. Yes. What? Sorry. Sorry, say that one more time, Danielle. Sorry, so, huh. Yeah. So if I'm I'm in the layers panel, and if I hmm. click on on melon head, and it should be just the melon with the empty background, it's not popping up on my full screen like my full screen is not changing your full screen is not changing. oh like did you click on the visible though on and off like this the little visible icon let's see if that's i just did now and it it gives me nothing so you don't have you don't have the background at all uh if i click on the eye yeah, I have it, but when, once I click on the eye, there's nothing but the the plain screen without even a melon. So, do you see exactly what I see right now in your screen? Do you see yes, exactly? Yes, on my screen, that's what I see. But then, and the, ba uh -huh. and the background layer has this all there, right? It has it all there, and then but, if you go on your melon head, go right. on your melon head, yeah. and then if you tap on that to get just your melon, right. I don't get that. I, I, I don't. The melon doesn't pop up. I, it, the screen oh. doesn't change. So do you see anything in the thumbnail of the melon? Maybe you didn't extract it properly. I'm thinking I'm assuming here. Uh, it, it, do you see a little see? See, oh, my has a little thumbnail, a green little melon here. Do you see that or no? You, you, see, you see nothing you're saying, right? This is blank for you. No, I have the melon. I have it, but oh, you it, do. It doesn't transfer to my full screen. So if I put. So like right now, pop, can you press on your melon head, just your melon head? Press yeah. yeah, so that you bring it up on your screen. Well, it is selected. Yeah, but won't it transfer to your full screen? No, when you oh. say full screen, what do you mean? Um, I mean, right now I'm looking at your melon, your orange, your your pineapple. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at all of it. But if you just tap, that's your background. But if you tap, okay. oh, okay, I thought so when you were tapping melon head that no. it was just bringing up your melon. <laughs> So, so no, but this is, I'm, I'm glad you're going through this because these, <laughs> these are the basic things. Doesn't mean if you do this, it's going to switch to that and that. Doesn't mean nothing. The only way the, the, to see what's happening, Danielle, is to actually, if I want to hide the background layer, yeah. then it doesn't matter where I'm on. I'm going to see exactly what I'm seeing. That's how it works, right? So the visible oh. determines, the visibility determines on the little eyeballs here, determines yeah. what you see and what you don't see. As far as you clicking, this is where mistakes happen. People click on the wrong thing and they're like, why is it not working? Because you're in the wrong layer. So you have to be just in, 
you know, cohesively um, aware of mm -hmm. what you're selecting and what's being visible at the same time. Right. It might sound basic to some of you, but this is the most confusing part of people learning the program. That's why I'm going through this very thoroughly. And I'm glad Danielle is asking these questions because I'm sure some of you also experience the same thing. So, so this determines what you see. This determines what you select. Right. And this is something I want you to understand because I can even do this. What's the difference now? Nothing. I'm just hiding this on top of that. And if I move it, this is just a copy of it on top of that one. That's all it is, right? right. So I want you to kind of follow me along and yes, ask questions and make sure you're totally in control and understand what's happening. So are we okay now, Danielle? Yes, we are. Thank you so much. Very good. You're welcome. Any other questions? I saw a few more hands there. Uh, I see uh, Ash Ashish and I see uh, uh, Chen Shao. Do you, do you have questions? Chen Shao, do you have a question? Or Ashish? Uh, so, you know, like I kept raising my hand. No worries, man. No worries. All good. Maybe you left your hand up. It's okay. And Chachish, maybe just, or sorry, Ch Chan Chow, just maybe just left her hand up there. Let me know if your mic's working or you want to have a question or just lower your hand if you don't have a question. Otherwise, I'm assuming you do. Okay. Oh, my mic. Uh, can you hear me now? No, I can hear you now. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just asking, how do we get that blue line? How do you get what? That uh, blue outline. Uh, when you popping up the layer. The selection, the watermelon layer. All right, the view outline. I mean the selection? The yeah, selection. the line is coming, right? This blue line? Yeah. When you go to this melon head, that's this right. Line is so, coming out. Yeah. so, so this bounding box, this, this line here, it, because it, it's auto select layer. So when you roll over it like this, I'm not oh, clicking, okay. I'm just moving the mouse. By default, the selection, it's really not a selection. It's acquiring a target of what's there. Yeah. A selection, I don't want to use that word loosely because I want to keep selection strictly with selections in Photoshop or selecting maybe a layer or an object. But this is just um, like, um, like um, uh, what's it called? Uh, an actual it, it, yeah, an, an, an indication that this is what's there. Yeah. So it's like an indicator, if anything. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, thank so you. So it really it's like a more like a like a visual IQ thing to predetermine what you're trying to do. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank okay, very good. So we have the melon here. Again, nothing's happening yet. We just have this melon head. Do me a favor, hide the background layer and go to the melon head. So not only I'm hiding this, I want you to be very careful on how I explain things. So hide this background layer because we need it later and click on this. So make sure this layer is selected. Because if you're in the background layer and you're trying to do something here, it doesn't make sense, right? So you should be in the right layer and the right target. So now we're in the melon head layer. We're going to go over here. I want you to click on the magic wand. As a matter of fact, let's let's use this one here. I wanted to sh throw you another one here. I want to use the... Um, the magic eraser tool. Okay, I want you to use that one, the magic eraser tool. Uh, so what I want you to do with this one here, this is another way to erase backgrounds, a quick way to delete the white background. A lot of images on Google, when you get images you wanna use in your designs and montages, they have a logos and stuff, they have a white background. The quickest way Photoshop has a, developed a tool to get rid of it in one click is this one here, magic eraser tool. We're gonna quickly utilize it right now with this example. So we have the melon head selected, extracted. It's got a little bit of a white background because that's how you know the leftover is created from the rectangular selection we made. As soon as we click on this white background, it deletes it, you see? So it's nice and clean now. And then what we wanna do after is go to the move tool. This is a very important tool, ladies and gentlemen. This is called the move tool. This one here, moves the melon head around, okay? So whatever layer you're on, it moves it. So when you want to create your montages, and we're going to use this to move things around, to reposition things, to reconstruct what we're trying to do, the move tool. 
So, so today we're going to focus on these very top four areas of our tools, and the move tool is no exception. By default, Photoshop used to have this thing disabled, and now it's enabled. Auto select. So make sure this is on, because if it's not, you not you might not be able to select directly what you're clicking on. So just click it on. It's set to layer right now, although you have a group option as well, and have this thing movable. So get comfortable moving this around. And then if you want to turn on the background layer, I want you to situate this exactly in the same spot. So just move it exactly where it is. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Just move it right on top of its original target. And there's a reason why we're doing this, and you'll see later on as we build this melon head. So I hope you're more comfortable now with the environment and some of the basics, because these are important things. There's nothing else more important than learning this. Once you master the basics, it's easy to do the other stuff in Photoshop, like color corrections and filters and all this other stuff. It's, it's all pre-made, okay? This is the real learning curve, is what you're doing right now. It's like extracting selections, deleting backgrounds, okay? Moving items between layers and stuff or documents later on. So this is why this is geared towards that stuff, okay? so. We took out the white background. We extracted the melon on a separate layer. We have the background layer still there. That's fine. And we're, we're aware that in order for us to get the rest of these ingredients, we have to be in that background layer. So once we're in the background layer, we can now continue with the exercise. But before I do that, I want to make sure everyone is on point. So I'm going to go back and check on you one more time. Let's go ahead and do that. Maybe I should just close this window. There we go. Any questions? Everyone's okay so far? And if you get really, really stuck, honestly, this is being recorded. If you feel more comfortable doing this on a watch the video kind of thing, then do that later. That's fine too. Okay, because um, I do want to finish the lesson too. <laughs> no pressure on some of you. I mean, I encourage for you to ask questions and stuff, but we got to also get through the exercise as well, okay? So if you stuck a minor miscellaneous thing, don't worry about it, right? If it's something crucial, then yeah, bring it up. Absolutely, let me know, let's solve it. And I hope you can share your screen because a lot of, so far I was able to help you without even asking you to share your screen, but there's gonna be a situation where it's a little complex and I need to see what's happening. You're gonna have to share your screen in order for me to help you. So please keep that in mind. All right, let's keep going forward. So we do have this thing set up. And we're ready to do the next step. So we're in the background layer. We're going to use the elliptical marquee tool, which is this one here. We're going to zoom in. And it says here, option start at center. What that means is if you don't hold option, you can do this, right? And deselect again to deselect it. But if you hold option or alt on the PC, you can go in the center. This is where the center is. I'm just holding the space bar to show you. That's the center. If you hold option, you get to start from the center out like this, you see? So it's growing from the center outwards. And if you hold option and shift together, it's gonna give you a perfect radius. So it's gonna look like that. So try practicing that a few times. And when we're done, we're going to extract this on a separate layer again, just like we did with the melon. This is going to be a lot of repetitive techniques here. So the purpose for that is for you to remember because repetition equals, you know, remembering and, and perfecting the craft, whether you're swinging a golf ball or, or you know, a golf club or a tennis racket or anything, you repeat, repeat, repeat until you learn. And this is going to be the same thing. It's instrumental the same way. And you're going to learn new things as you go. So it's like a growing learning curve. Really, really well done. So Command-J, copy and paste. You can see here clearly how I extracted this on a... Now I have three layers. I'm going to hide the background so you can clearly see what's happening. I'm going to double click here and call it I01. This is going to be called the I, eyeball or the eye. Actually, the eyeball is going to be the, um, the, the blueberry. So I1, okay? And right away, see how I still have the marquee tool, right? There's no need to have selections anymore. So you have to deselect the selection if there's one there. Another way to deselect is to go to select, deselect. So make sure there's no selection. And then you have to go into the move tool. This is the move tool. And so what you have to do is move this on top of the melon, okay? 
So I'm going to hold the space bar. And if I move it to the melon, what's happening? I can't move it on top of it because this layer is underneath the melon head layer. So what you have to do is um, rearrange the distribution of the layers. So what I'm going to do is move this layer ahead of that layer. Just by doing this, moving it to the top, I'm moving this on top of this one. So it's, as you can see, the orientation, it works like this. At the very top, it's like a stack sheet of paper. From the top to the bottom is how this is basically constructed. So I'm holding the space bar, I'm using the move tool, and I'm moving this nice and easy at the top of the thing there. I think the eye is a little too big for the melon head. So what I'm going to do next is teach you how to use the transform tools in Photoshop. For that one, you have, um, I know you have, it's called show transform controls. So might as well show you that. If you do activate this on and off, it does give you the transform box on the layer. I find that a little too complex by learning, but you know what? Students do like it, so I'm going to just cover it right now as I'm doing this. So what I want you to do is grab the corner and resize it. Now, be careful when you do this because I'm not holding shift. If it's perfect for you, then that means you don't have to hold shift. For those of you that have a different preferences, you might have to hold shift to keep the proportions constrained. Because if once it starts doing this, then you know it's not constrained. So hold shift or don't hold shift. That's the question. Determine what works for you, what doesn't. For me, I have to hold shift. For you, maybe you don't have to, okay? So then you go like this, and then you press enter. And then you have your eyeball selected. Turn off show controls, please. Don't leave it on because it can mistakenly, you can do something. Yes, go ahead. So uh, I did exactly the same way you read, but somehow the new uh, lemon is not being created. Uh, sorry, uh, did, did, did you uh, copy, did you press command J or copy and paste? Uh, can you see my screen? No, can you share it, please? Yeah, let me, I, let me, I did let me, share it. Let me, let me go back to here. And that's good that... Sometimes sharing your screen will help me better understand what you're doing. Oh, there you go. Okay. So, so, so I selected this uh, second thing from here, uh, elliptical marquee tool, and then I came here and hold on. Click. Option, option click. Yeah. And Alt. Yeah, you have a PC. Okay. So hold Alt. Yeah. So and I did shift. Alt Shift and, and then, this selected. Okay. And, and then. Yeah. And I click on the background layer, make sure the background layer is selected. Because. Um, and I did control J. Oh, now it came. I don't know how. So, okay. so, so Prem, I think what happened was you, you deselected your layers and your background layer wasn't selected. Oh, so some, okay, okay. So that's okay. It's not your fault because you're under your assumption. You thought automatically the background layer was selected. Well, guess what, everyone? This is everyone. You have to select the background layer. So what Prem did was she did nothing wrong. She just, you know, didn't verify the background layer. So Photoshop is very tedious. I understand. But once you master these basic fundamentals, it's very easy. Pay attention to what layer you're selecting. Pay attention to what you're doing in terms of selections and follow the steps, whether it's copy, paste, thank you. command J. You're very welcome. And thank you for asking that. That's a very good question because most people, you know, they, they do take a while to recognize how important it is to select not only this, but also from here. So make sure this is selected, this is selected, a lot of checklists you have to do. And then Prem, what you want to do after that is turn on show controls, resize the the orange or call it a lemon that's fine it looks like an orangey lemon let's call it an orange peel okay resize it press enter and then turn off show controls sorry where is show controls again if so you got to be in the move tool yeah and make sure you're selecting the i i renamed the orange peel i1 up here there's a checkbox that turns on and off the show controls show transform controls button You see it? Uh, no, I don't. Let's see. Uh, I think we're still seeing Prem's screen, not oh. yours. 
It was, oh, oh. oh my God. You know what? <laughs> let me go ahead and... Um, <laughs> okay, let me share my screen now. Sometimes I thought automatically switches to mine and I have to manually do it. There we go. Can you see my screen now? Yeah, I see the student list. Very good. Yeah. Let me see. Close this one down. There we go. So, so, so I'm in the move tool and I make sure this show controls transform is on. So my I don't even have that box up. Are you in the move? Are you in the move tool? Uh, I was. Let me go make sure I'm still there. Yeah. yeah, click on that move tool. V's the shortcut to go to the move tool. Yeah, I'm in the move tool. Do you have this whole thing at all? Like up here? I, I have the whole, like, I. it looks like I have most of it, but I don't have the box that sh says show transform controls. And what layer do you have selected? And I have my eyeball, I01 layer. And you don't have this option here? Huh? No. And, and you're in the move tool, right? The yep. move tool? You definitely have to share your screen. I got to see this. Okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to do share. Okay. Uh, oh, my God. I'm trying to share in Photoshop. So it's, it's just up here. There's I know. A, yeah. And then you click on your, um, uh, it's, there's another thing you got to follow down here. You click on the screen or maybe just application if you want to share your application. And then we should see it. Okay, it says share content presenter mode, add background. Why am I not seeing anything else? Hmm. Sorry. Do you, do you have window, window or screen? What does it say there? Um, in the wrong thing. No, I'm in Microsoft Teams. Share. Like share as in like up here on the top left on top. You yeah, know, right next to my camera. Right to yeah. Mike. And, and right. then and then you have another thing here. Just click on your screen. It says screen or window or desktop, I think. Maybe do your desktop, whatever's whatever's available, you can try. Because uh, the desktop presents everything. There you go. Oh, okay. Okay. So what did so, you click on so I know? So now you see me. Um so what do you see? Do you see me now? Yeah, like click, on, my... click on Photoshop though. I'll open oh, Photoshop. okay. It's on my larger screen. So maybe I'll just bring it over. Oh, so you do have two screens. Maybe yeah, that's I do. why. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, click on that one or just move it over to the other screen. Or you can select the way you did this. You can, I'm sure you can select the other screen as well. You just have to kind of figure it out. Okay. Okay. Uh, here, maybe this Microsoft Teams Classic Share. Can you see it now? No, I just okay. see the, the people in the class. Okay. Okay, let me just move my screen over. Why won't it move over? Okay, hang on one sec. Okay. Well, there you go. Something on there. Oh, okay. There we go. Perfect. Okay. All right. Okay. And just make okay. a little, I can't see that area that we're smaller. talking about. Okay. No, like the actual whole frame of the application. Just move it over to the left. There you go. Auto select. Okay. So it should be here. Yeah. It's not there. You click on the melon again. Let's see what layers you're in. The layer selection there. Not layers. Hang on. Is it? It's over here. Oh, where did it go? Where did all my stuff go? <laughs> yeah, because you, because you, it's, it's probably, um, it's, it's separated. That's why. It's okay. Just, I can help you this way. Just move it over. Move it over to the left. It could be, you know what, what and what version are you running? 2014. I mean, tw wow, 24, right? Uh, my my computer's, you mean what version of, uh, yeah, 24. Photoshop, 24, oh, yeah, yeah. 2024, okay. 20, yeah. Click on the melon again. Just click on the melon or the orange, actually. Click on the orange peel. Yeah, yeah. Go to that little settings button. Settings, give me, uh, give me an indication of right, left, where... Pop, right in the middle, right there. It looks like a little gear icon. The little gear icon in the middle. Uh, go more to the right, to the right, to the right with the mouse. Keep going, keep going. Right to the end of that little little circle, oh, but yeah, that here. one right there. Okay. Oh, here it is. Show transform controls is ticked. And it's not visible. But it's Maybe not it's there. your view. Go to view again under view. Yeah. Screen mode in the middle, screen mode. 
Okay. Let me see where my my um, I'm just looking at mine for a second. How about go to window? Let's try a window. Uh, in window, window, window. Yeah, like the window menu here. Um, okay. Oh, shoot, I gotta go back to the thing. Okay, so go to window, go to workspace. Okay, so go to go to reset 2024 Photoshop workspace. Okay, I just did that. Go to workspace again. The workspace, yeah. Go to essentials default. Yeah. Huh. That's the weirdest thing. This is the story of my life. No, but it's selected <laughs> now, though. Like, see how it's the, there's the bounding box now. This, what, this box? Yeah, because you can resize it now already. Just can, can, can you resize it? Like, yeah, but I, I wasn't even looking there. I was like, well, where, where is this? Why is it? <laughs> it's under maybe that. Oh, there it is. Now I see something. Okay, yeah, now, I can resize uh, it now. And, and, and press enter. Press enter. Uh, you want me to just press so, enter? Yeah, yeah, there I did. Yeah. And then. Yeah, it's the weirdest thing. Okay. So here's the thing. Um, could be like a setting or something in the program. Maybe it's. Um, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't figure it out. Sometimes it's okay. the little things. I've seen this happen before, though. It's not the first time that. It, so it's not you. It's something okay. to do with the version or the application or the way it's installed. Uh, here's the thing. Th it's not a big deal. Okay. okay. What I think you can do is also is this, and this is how I used to do it. I didn't have to use this at all. This control transforms button. Rather than, I'll teach you one more method for those of you that might have the same problem that Danielle did on her computer. Just press just press command T for tr transform or go to edit free transform. Honestly, this is a lot better because you can do a lot more with this one here. It's called um, free transform right here. Free transform. OK, so once you do free transform, you don't have to rely on that button anymore. doesn't matter. Well, one day we'll figure it out. I promise you when we maybe sit down when they look at your computer, we'll have to go through things. But for now, it's not even worth it. Just do free transform. Yeah. Press enter or escape and you're good. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right. And th that is weird. It, it does bother me that, you know what? Maybe I'll look it up and see how, why this thing is not showing up. It could be something small. Like this should be basically, even this is different than mine. Maybe it's the version, I'm guessing. All right. Next, I want you to copy this over here because there's, you know, it's not going to be a, a Cyclops melon, right? We could make it a Cyclops, but we'll do like two. We'll give it a pair of eyes, right? So the other one, here's what I want you to do now. You're going to learn how to do a shortcut with Option or Alt. I cannot see your screen. I can oh, still see Daniel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotta, gotta and again. just while I'm here, though, like this is going in behind. How do I get it to the front? So go, so minimize. So go to your layers and just drag it to the top. Okay. You know, you, okay, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, there's your layers. Okay, just drag that over to the top. Like drag the eye over to the top? Yeah, okay. top of the melon. There you go. And now try uh, moving it on top. There uh, you go. Yeah. And 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 re, since you're there, make it smaller, just a tad. Uh, and so I have to go to make it smaller. I have to go to my... No, you just grab, grab the corner oh, just and grab just it. resize okay. it. Thanks. Yeah, because it's got a bounding box, which means you right. can... And then press enter. Okay make it real small not really small like that's yeah that's good press enter i did and the bounding box is visible by default now well that's annoying huh <laughs> well it's okay actually click on the melon it's not annoying it's just the th it, i'm just not used to it yeah. right so your setup is different something happened with your preferences or something it, nothing wrong with it but and actually it's good a lot of people will like what you have because it's automatically giving you bounding boxes on everything that you select it's got to be a preference thing and it's something that we can figure out another time okay okay no worries though if you want to deselect it click on that clear background there just click on something else like here yeah there you go okay so that's fine uh i'm so sorry one more question in terms of locking different screens is that important like my background is locked right now do it should be lock? locked. I want it to be locked because it's a background. Yeah. By default, every background is locked. Okay. And if the you other unlock layers? it, not because you want to move them freely. 
the okay. background you don't want to move it's like do you remember the good old days when you guys i don't know i grew up tracing comic book superheroes when i was younger so i would stick them on the window and i would put another sheet of paper and trace it on top yeah well you don't want the background to move you want to be stuck on the on the mm -hmm. window right that's the same yeah. as the background it's pasted on you can't move it it's fixed okay great thank you all right perfect excellent so i'm going to share my screen now i'm going to go back to my screen here so i asked you to select the i1 or the orange peel you're in the move tool and you some of you might have the show control box on and off that's fine uh, if if you do be careful don't grab the center because you're just moving the center you gotta grab it here somewhere off the center to move it just remember that just because i know danielle had her bounding box present and some some of you might also have the same thing uh, so but if you don't then you don't um, you don't have to worry about it you just have to hold option or alt and drag to the other side so now i have two of them and you see here i1 copy you can just rename it and call it i2 so now you have two eyes and you can move them around reposition them i'm going to zoom out and you have two eyes the melon head and the background invisible i'm going to make it visible i'm going to select the background so i can grab the rest of the ingredients that i may need Okay, the next thing is the lasso. The lasso is this one here. Okay. Actually, let's stick with the let's let's just circle back to that one later. Let's go back to this one here. Another shift perfect circle. Well, some of you might not have to hold shift by your default preferences in the new version of Photoshop, but if you do, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, this is the okay. elliptical tool. You just make a selection like this to select the blueberry. Okay, go ahead. Milo, could you um, repeat the copy and paste function? Oh yeah, so so with the melon, what I did was I I just clicked on the I one. I hold Hello? option or alt. Can you hear me? Could you repeat? Yeah, can you hear me? Okay. <coughs> yeah. Alicia, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So what yeah. you want to do is uh, hold option or alt and drag the melon to the other spot. Not the melon, the, the orange peel, sorry, the eye. So to copy something, you alt drag. If you hold alt, you can make multiple copies of the same layer like that. I'm just gonna press okay, command. Okay, I got say. it, thanks. Got it, no problem, you're welcome. Okay. Welcome, okay. So now we're moving on to the blueberries and I wanna make sure First and foremost, you have your background layer selected. If you don't have it selected, it's hard for us to select whatever we want. Because look, everything we're extracting is from the source. The source happens to be the background layer. Everything else we're copying and pasting becomes a copy of that selection into other layers, additional layers, which is good. In a way, we're creating a montage of a melon head creature made of fruits and vegetables which is kind of fun and we're learning a lot of important things so in the background layer we're going to use the, uh, the elliptical tool again so now we use the rectangular tool for the basic selection now we're using the elliptical tool for the more specific selection in this case a lot of oval selections you can just go somewhere here look at my, my hand cursor let me show you how to gauge this this is these are pixels see the pixels they all go vertically and horizontally it's like a grid so if you see that this one is the top this is the side if you know how to fix your position of your mouse here see how i'm capturing it's it's like an x y coordinate let me open up my grid view show grid you might not need the, the grid's too small i can make it more fixed to this but i'm not going to get into that technicality right now so i'm going to hide the grid rather than just do it by eyeballing it position your your uh, eyes here and there where is this is why this is x coordinate where do they meet they meet roughly here right where they meet go slightly inwards a bit 
that's where you should make your selection. So if you start from here and you make a selection all the way, it should be almost perfect to what you want it to be. And if it's not, make it a little bigger, right? Go inside and move it to the right spot. At least it's almost perfect, right? It doesn't have to be exactly, exactly perfect. And that's exactly what you want to make an elliptical selection of the next target. Similar to the orange peel, but this one wouldn't hold option from the center. We just went from the corner to the corner. I want you to be familiar with both selection methods because they're equally important. I'm going to zoom out now, command minus, right? Again, please make sure you're in the background layer because that's where we're going to extract this. And we're going to press command J, okay, or copy and paste, command J. And we're going to call this um, I berry. So it's, it's the eyeball, okay? And then we're going to go to the move tool. And be careful because it's behind the melon head. So you can always have to move this on top. Not only there, on top of everything. Because the eyeball, watch this, is going to be placed on top of the orange peel like this. I'm going to put it to the left. And to copy it, just like we did with the eye originally, we hold option or alt, and we make another copy to the right. So now we got two of them. And this is how we're going to construct the whole exercise using the same methods, repeating them over and over again, but engaging ourselves in various selection methods and learning new ways of doing it. So this is going to be called iBerry, we'll call it two, or left and right if you want to be more specific. That's fine. Okay. So now we have all these things. We'll have one, two, three, four, five layers we made just to construct this right here. I'm going to pause for a second because at this point you either get it or you don't get it. So I want to make sure everybody gets it because uh, this is the crucial point going forward to keep learning selections and keep, you know, repeating these steps. So don't be shy. I know some of you already spoke up and asked questions. The rest of you I haven't heard from. So I'm assuming you're okay. And if I, and if you don't want to, you can watch the video later if you want, if you, if you prefer that. But I do encourage all of you to ask questions. Okay. So go ahead and um, this is what we're here for. So please ask any questions if you have this, something related to this. Obviously, you can always ask me other questions later. I have a question. Yes. Sorry, so go ahead. I just made an eyeball. Uh, the layer was also formed, but uh, it is it did not go on the melon and the lemon earlier where we did. It's a different layer, new layer formed, and it's only just that on that layer. Is it blank or is it the blue? Is it, it the it blueberry? Has, yeah. It has the blueberry. I will show you. Yeah, but share screen. It's screen. just only one thing there. But for you, it is showing like a different thing. Yeah. So can you make sure that the background layer has the eyeball? Click on the little eye. Visible. The visible. Yeah. Right. No. Right there. Yeah. There's a checkbox. Yeah, that's right. Do the same with the background background there you go so like but for you it came up here on this right here but for me it didn't come there no no it's it's fine you just you just have to do one more step you have to go to the move tool go to the move tool right and move it and move it to and turn off show transform turn off that's why see that's why i don't like that show transform thing it messes things up press escape or command z Press escape right now, escape. Uh, turn off, go to the move tool and turn off the checkbox, show transform controls, turn it off. Turn it on only if you need to, okay? And just drag it over, right? Right, and now, Prem, yeah. drag it Drag it on top of the, the whole, see the layer? Drag the eyeball at the very top. There, and then move it on top again, on top of the thing. Oh, 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 okay, okay, thank you so much. You're very welcome, okay? This is the thing. I want everybody to understand how this works. It's a learning curve, okay? But once we, we understand this very basic process and an important one, it's, you know, it's going to pave the way for everything else that we're going to do, okay? So, um, because we've established that we think my transform box is always on by default, is that affecting the fact that I'm not getting this right now because I'm somehow not able to even copy my blueberry. Yeah, we're going to have to fix that one. 
Um, maybe we're going to restart your program and relaunch it and probably go through some preferences or something. OK, that's what we have to do. Can you tell me just for the moment, where do I go to autom uh, to manually deselect that? Because um, um, it's always on, eh? Uh, yeah, I remember like because it's not even on my screen, I don't remember where we went to see that. Oh, in fact, it's just always on and it's not on my screen because there's the button for it. Yeah, let Do me you, let me you know what? Let me let me just see something quickly. Uh, show controls in Photoshop. Let me just see here. I'm I'm googling it honestly at this point because okay. it's such a stupid miscellaneous thing. Yeah. Um, you want to Google it later, just for the just sure, for the sure. Yeah, I don't want to take up time. I can totally right? do this later. Just Google it. It's a it's a such a small minute minuscule okay. thing, but it's an important thing. I don't want to belittle it, right? But for now, if you could just follow me along, please, and then we'll yeah. we'll get done, okay? Because we're kinda, we're running a little behind. Yeah. No <laughs> okay. worries. No worries. All right. Excellent. But I'd love to help you, as you know, right? Uh, I, I don't want to anybody behind all right let's go ahead and share my screen again and this time we're going to you see how the routine is we we keep repeating these steps back and forth we click on the background layer and make sure it's you know it's visible so you can see it so not only you can see it it's selected as well before we proceed to the next step and the next step it would be for us to use the Another other Tacoma key. Okay, let's let's get this last one out of the way. This one, I want you to kind of do this. You're gonna go with the selection tool. Um, you, let me show you how the grid works. So if you go to View, uh, Show Rulers, Command R is the universal shortcut for your rulers. It works in Illustrator. It works in Photoshop. It works in InDesign. It works in all programs. Command R or Control R on your PC. This opens your rulers. You see, Command R, Command R. What you want to do there is basically create a guide like this and a guide like that. You got to click on the ruler, vertical or horizontal, and pull down the ruler to construct a guide. Guides are important, as you know, to work on your designs, especially in InDesign and Illustrator and even in Photoshop, right? This will help you gauge a more perfect elliptical selection based on your target. So in this case, like I mentioned earlier, that imaginary X and Y coordinate, well, now I'm showing it to you so you can actually apply it. And you can start from here, click and drag the mouse and make a selection that's pretty close to what you want it to be like, like that. Now, look, the tomato is not perfect, so that's fine. I'm going to go with this anyways. I'm going to zoom out. I'm, I, I don't like the guides. They're really disruptive, so I'm going to go to view and the guides i'm going to clear the guides i don't need them anymore they serve their purpose so i'm going to command j or copy and paste this selection from the background by doing copy and paste command j we're going to call this the mouth okay and the mouth of course has to be on top of the melon it doesn't have to necessarily be on top of the eyeballs as long as it's on top of the melon head you should be able to move it and place it on top of the melon head like this all right, and then you can uh, you, now let's do some transform. If you have the show transform controls on or off, you can also alternatively go to edit, transform, and do free transform. Okay, you can do that one. Just looking for something here that it's kind of maybe help Danielle with her show transform button. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, anyways, let's keep going here. So you have your um, um, tomato selected here. Let's press Command, Control, T, or Show Controls, whatever works. You can squish it a bit, okay? Just so we have some more space for the other items. And press Enter, okay? Or just turn off Show Controls button. If it's on, that's fine. You can just deselect by clicking here. You can do that as well, okay? So... The next one, let's click on the background layer. And now, so far, we've done elliptical tool. We haven't done anything else. So it's time to exploit the other tools. This is called the lasso right here, OK? 
The lasso is very hard to wield. So you have to literally do this. Here's a lasso tool. You're going to zoom in. You're going to go click and drag. Hold the mouse. I hope you have a mouse now, not a trackpad, because you can't do this with your trackpad. You can try, but it's going to be very difficult. So I'm using my mouse to do this freehand. Look at this. I'm using a freehand. I'm holding the button and I'm navigating through different areas to do this. Now, it's not going to be perfect, right? As soon as I let go, oops, I messed up the control. I deselect, I try again. You see what I mean? You keep trying on and off. Now, this other tool is called the polygonal lasso tool. The polygonal lasso tool works like this. It's got like, you can click and click and click. It's, it's good for like zigzagging shapes like this, right? But you can easily get lost with this tool and, and it gets frustrating sometimes. The best way to escape any situation, whether using a magnetic or polygonal tool, because this one snaps. I'm not using any shortcuts. I'm just clicking in different points. Just press escape and you get to start all over again. Now I'm going to show you the best of both worlds. I'm going to show you how to use the lasso and the poly polygonal tool in conjunction with one another. So I like to start with the lasso tool and I like to keep my hand close to the option key because when I'm ready, I'm going to press the option key to start this zigzag process. So if I hold, because if I don't hold option, it's going to do this. It's going to be freehand. Once I lose control of my mouse, I can always hold option to give my mouse a break. Now I get to let go of the mouse. I'm resting my hand. As long as I hold option and I hold the mouse down, I get to do freehand. As soon as I let go of the mouse, I turn, I switch to the polygonal lasso tool. So in a way that helps me gain a broader control of the method. So if I go like this now, right to the edges here, like this. Now I'm going to hold alt. The whole time I'm holding option or alt, and I'm going to go click, click, click. Now, this is a little intermediate, so please be patient. You have to try it a few times. If it's not the first time, try the second, try the third, try the fourth, try the fifth time if you need to. Look at this. I'm holding the mouse nice and easy, nice and steady right there. Let go of the mouse, rest my hand, holding option the whole time. Okay. So click, holding the mouse again, holding option. Now I'm going to go click, click. I'm holding option the whole time. I'm in this lasso tool. By holding option, I have the control of doing both the zigzag and the free form selection. Once I let go now, I have a selection made that's pretty darn close to what I wanted it to look like. And of course, I'm in the background selection tool to get this accomplished. So try this out. I know it's going to take you a little few tries. I didn't trust me. I didn't. Even now, I'm surprised I did this the first time. Sometimes it takes me two, three times on my own to get this done. And I've been doing this for over 20 years. So I can imagine how much um, you know complicated your situation might be or the learning curve. So be patient and, and try this a few times. It's a good way to master this because there's a lot of times you're going to use quick selection methods to get things done. Because look, when, you, when you're proficient in the software, uh, you know, you want to be um, you want to be fast and effective by executing these methods. So I want to teach you all the all the important, uh, not just the fundamentals, but the professional methods that you can quickly make selections with with ease and 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 with speed as well. So I'm going to go ahead and press Command J right now, copy and paste. OK, and we're going to call this the bow tie. OK, and I'm going to go to the move tool. And I'm going to move this bow tie, right? Well, look, I'm in the wrong tool here. See, I messed up. So what happens now, I deselect. I, whenever you get stuck, press escape, deselect, select the right tool, which is the move tool, and move the bow tie to the desired location. And yes, that should be on top of the melon. I'm going to move it up here. And there's the bow tie. It can be underneath the mouth. That's not bad right there. It's like a little overlap. And again, if you want to continue, we go back to the background layer and we grab the rest of the stuff. Okay. We're halfway there. Actually, we're, to be honest with you, we're like 70% there. This is the other lasso. It's called the magnetic lasso. For that one, you can actually use the this one here. It's called the bottom one. Be careful because this magnet's very, very strong. So make sure there's no loose change or keys in your pockets, okay? I always make this joke just to make everybody a little happy. So 
the magnetic lasso tool. Look, these days, it even teaches you how each tool works. Photoshop gives you a quick demo. If you hover on top of the, the, the tool itself, Photoshop actually shows you a little preview of an animation, how the tool works. Look, this one here, move tool. Look, rectangular marquee. So it's like a little tutorial along the way. It probably eats up a lot of your RAM, but that's okay. It's part of the deal, right? So this magnetic lasso tool, again, it sticks to the pixel. So if I go ahead and click here, I go all the way. Look, I'm not, I'm not clicking. I'm just following the mouse uh, along the method of the pixel differential. Photoshop recognizes the difference between the white pixels and the, and the orange pixels, and it just does that. See, look, and when you're done, just click to acknowledge that's the selection. Could I have used this method up here? Sure, but I want to teach you a little bit of everything. So uh, every every little bits and pieces of you know images that we're using here and information is important. So I want to teach you as many methods as possible, which this uh, exercise here encapsulates all the methods in one. That's why I love this exercise. And no better time than to teach you this in week two of the program. So you can get a good good understanding of how selections work. So now we're in the background layer. And we're going to practice this next week too. So don't worry. Okay. Next week we'll have another lesson, more selections, more things. So we even if I know we're running past our, our time here, uh, we're still going to uh, you know finish this up. We'll still have some time actually. We're not that faster in time but i like to keep the lesson under two hours hour and a half so you have some time to reflect and ask questions and do some work as well in the class so, but in the beginning for me to deliver this i gotta do the full length i guess to make sure everyone understands it so i'm in the background layer i have the selection active i use the magnetic lasso tool copy and paste okay command j whatever you like copy paste command j those are your methods we're gonna call this one here. Guess what this is gonna be? Anybody wanna take a guess? What's the grapefruit slice going to be? No guesses? The smile? <laughs> good, that's a good guess actually. I prefer that too. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on your side with this one. It's gonna be the ear, okay? Because it's gonna go over here. Whoops, wrong tool. I'm gonna to move it over here. And I'm going to do the show transform or transform tool. And I'm going to show you how to rotate something. So it's going to rotate. See, it's going to rotate like this. So to rotate something, you have to go on the outside corner. Okay. Outside corner. And you're going to have to go close to the edge of the bounding box and rotate it and resize it and locate it. So let's resize it, locate it like that. So it's going to be the ear. Looks like a steak. <laughs> All right. An orange peel. So there's one ear. And to do the other ear, we're going to do the same thing. Option or alt drag. Duplicate it to the other side. Right. Now I'm going to teach you something else. We're going to learn how to edit. Transform. And watch this. Um, flip horizontal. So it flips the other way. You can also alternatively do it this way. You can kind of grab it and pull it like that. Some people like to do that. Um, to see it better, I'm going to move it up here. So you can kind of do what's called a crisscross flip. You can do a vertical flip, but you have no control by doing this. It's it's not like um, there's no constraints, okay? But if you do it that way from the menu, it's perfectly based on the isometric, you know, reflection of the original. So it's the same thing keeps the proportions. So I'm just going to, you know, since we're doing a free form exercise, you can do it any way you like. Press enter, take off the show transform and move it right back where it was. Ear one and ear two. All right. So that's the magnetic lasso tool. Um, the next one is the quick mask. But for this one, I'm going to introduce to you, and I'll tell you right now, this might become your favorite tool of all. It's going to be the quick selection tool. The quick selection tool came out a few years ago, 
and it kind of revolutionized how things are done by selections. So this one works based on pixel and proximity. I'm making my brush smaller. How am I doing this? If you look at the letter P on your keyboard, there's two square or curly brace brackets, the ones you're going to use in JavaScript probably. So there's, you know, the letters O and P on the right side of it. There's the square brackets. This increases the brush size smaller and bigger. Try each one. If you don't see what I see, maybe because you have caps lock en enabled. So make sure caps lock is off, not on. Otherwise, you'll see a, a more of a precision cursor as opposed to the brush size of a radius. So make sure caps lock is disabled. So this will work. This is important because this controls your brush radius size. This is the radius size. This works on all your brushes in Photoshop. And brushes are a key part of Photoshop as well, as well as selections, so are brushes. When we start doing more advanced selection modes, we're going to use brushes. As a matter of fact, brushes are so popular that they came up with this new tool called the Selection Brush Tool. Okay, So that's something we'll get into another time. I don't want to confuse the lesson right now. So stick with this one. This is the Quick Selection Tool. And what, what you do with this one is you click on, a, on, a, on an area that you want to select. In this case, I'll click on this little mushroom here. Well, I'm in the wrong layer, <laughs> so make sure you're in the background layer. I'm going to click on this. See how this is like dark tone, highlight, mid-tone. I'm going to click on the mid-tone level here like that. You see how I clicked once and it made a selection of that area? What happens if I click right beside it on top? It'll select a bigger area. And if I click over here, it selects a bigger area. So a couple of clicks, basically. If you click expanding the selection gradually like this, if you go click and click and click, so I'll even go boldly and click over here, right? Eventually it's kind of, see, it's kind of, it kind of went off course there for a bit. But if you click over here, it's like a hit and miss. If you click on the stem, it'll kind of grab the whole thing that you want. And that's a nice way to do a selection like this. I'll do it one more time. I'm going to go select, deselect. And teach you another cool way to do it because if you hold the mouse if you find them this is with a little bit of experience you'll kind of know the mid-tones this is like the mid-tone level if i hold the mouse and go click and drag done you see i did it in like two seconds maybe less than a second command d's deselect i'll do it again if you click over here like i did you can do it in steps but if you catch the right sweet spot you're going to get the whole thing like i did so again click and drag the mouse in a tiny area, or you can just kind of go click and click. If you hit the right spot between this and that, it'll grab the whole thing for you. So practice it a few times until you get it right, like I did. And I'm sure you have no problems doing this once you do it. Make sure you're in the background layer. And we're using now the new infamous quick selection tool. We already covered the, the wand earlier. Well, actually, we didn't cover the wand yet. We'll cover it next. We covered all the other basic tools, except this new one that came out. We'll cover that one as well. This is the quick selection tool. We're going to go to the background layer, Command-J, or copy and paste. This is going to be, anybody want to guess? What's this going to be? No, the Head. nose. Could be the nose. Very good. Could be the nose. Uh, Head. It could be also the hat. <laughs> this is this is not an ordinary uh, melon. This is a, a melon that cooks. It's a chef melon, so it's it's a it's a cook. So it's going to be the hat. Uh, you can make it a nose if you want. I mean, it looks like a nose if you flip it the other way. But I think for the nose, we'll use the pepper or something, right? So this would be the hat. And we're going to put it on top of the melon head, so it looks like it's stemming from the hat. And we can even do a little transform and squish and a little tilt. So it's got the little cool little kind of hat like that. And turn off the short transform controls. All right. And the next now is going to be the magic wand. This is where you get to learn how the magic wand works with different tolerance values. Um, this is where not all images will have a white background. You're going to have a background that's very not as distinct. You have all these different colors. Very hard to select this using the methods we used previously. So which presents us the opportunity to ex explore the, the magic one tool. This was like the when I first started using Photoshop, this was like 
our magic tool because it did everything we wanted to do. Ever since then, these other tools came out, like the quick selection tool, object selection tool. This was the tool. Okay. So is it obsolete? No, it's still a powerful, powerful tool. And the way it works is it selects different colors. So if I go ahead and select this green, let's say here, my, now my tolerance, mind you, default is 32. 32 means on that basically the range of sampling color it goes from zero, I believe, to 256. So 32 is the like the like the basic default level. So if you click on that one, if you click here, it'll also oh, wrong layer, background layer. Here we go. Deselect. If you click here, it'll select that green or this green or this green or that green here, right? So it's a good way to to use a different um, threshold level for this. I'll leave it at 32 because you probably have your set at 32 as well. I'll start from the stem. I'm going to hold shift now. Shift will add more of these colors to my selection. Uh, you might have to press shift numerous of times, perhaps maybe two dozen times, but eventually it'll work for you. And you're also learning how to select by color range because all the different shades of green are being selected with this very same method by using the magic wand. Now, if you notice, I picked up some pixels here that I don't want. For that, just based on last week's exercise, if shift is add, option is subtract. You see, these shortcuts are utilized in different, different methods in different ways. So in this case, I'm applying a selection so shift means add, option means subtract. When I don't have a selection, option was duplicating layers, you see? So it's a different way of using these shortcuts. So they are what they are, and you have to just get used to it. So option click takes away that selection, you see? And if I hold shift, I'm going to add this selection, see? And if I hold option again, shift. So that means I have to lower my tolerance. So instead of 32, I'm going to go with 10. 10 means if I hold shift right now, it's going to be a little more strict based on my isolation of pixels. So I can just do it more gradually this way. So just maybe move it to 10 is a good number, actually. So if you use 10, it might give you a more approximate number. And I'm going to hold shift and get this little area here. And at the end of the day, I think I like what I have. I got the pepper selected. And I'm going to go to the background layer and I'm going to do copy and paste or command J. And this will be the nose. Although I, I do agree with your mushroom theory. I think the mushroom looks good too for the nose. I don't know how this will look like the nose, but it will because, hey, it's a, it's not a human after all. It's a little melon head thing. So I'm going to move it here, but I like it to be on top of the mouth and on top of the eyeball. So I'm going to move it right to the top. Right there. If you want to make it look more like a nose, then you can, I can show you some of the more expanded transform methods in Photoshop. It's under warp. Warp is a pretty cool transform feature that was introduced. Oh man probably like a decade ago, but it's it was new at the time. So the way that works is basically you can warp almost any any pixelated image into any form that you like. So you can really make this thing look like this and really kind of morph it a little more. As what kind of nose you want to create. I don't think this is even necessary, but I want to show you anyways. So maybe I could do this all right press enter so there's our morphed transformed pepper you can do this with any any uh, uh, pixel pixelated image or layer even let's say the tomato for example we make him more like lips or the mouth go to edit transform we'll try warp again this one will do this. All 
right? You can apply it on almost anything. I could have easily squished, squished it as well to do the same result, but this is a little more, I guess, customizable in terms of the pixels. It's like liquid pixels, right? That's what the term they used to use. Okay, we're moving down to the almost the last one here. So if I go to the background layer, this is now a good combination technique, which I'll show you the new tool as well with this. It presents me the opportunity to teach you the new tools, which I already did, which was the quick selection tool, because this one is not in the, it's not in this little handout because it wasn't around back then. This is like probably like three, four years old, maybe it's longer. But uh, these tools came out a little after, so they're not there, but that's okay, because I'll teach them to you now. So with this one here, um, what you want to do, let's first let's first um, learn this rectangle marquee magic wand technique. So the way that works is you create a rectangular marquee tool like this. And you want to select that instead. Now think about the possibilities here. If option is subtract and shift is add, and we have this rectangular selection made on this background layer, that means if I go to the magic one tool and I don't want to select whatever's inside this bounding box, I don't want the white pixels in there. I want the opposite. All I have to do is hold the option key with the magic wand. Again, this is assuming you have a rectangular selection targeted on your subject. The background has to be white or any other color. You hold option and you click on the white background. Here's what happens. You're trapping the selection of whatever the remaining pixels are. A very, very clever technique and a good one at that. So now you can just hold option again and take out these little white pixels also and that those ones. And eventually you have everything else selected except the white pixels. So that's again a very nice technique that covers this rectangular marquee and the magic wand in conjunction. You was using um, you know, option basically. Copy and paste. I'm gonna call this the any suggestions. Maybe the eyebrows. We'll try the eyebrows. We're going to move them right on top of, um, well, we're going to move it right on top of the mouth because it's going to be underneath the eyes. I'm going to put it here, do a little command T, press enter, option drag. Uh, let's do the flip again, edit, transform. This time we'll do a flip horizontal or vertical. One does vertical, one does horizontal. So it flips it and you can put that right there. And this one can go right there. Now, let me show you one more way to do this because I do want to teach you the new tools that were introduced in the software. So um, the new one is the object selection tool. This one's like really incredible, okay? Because I could have done this whole exercise, maybe most of this whole exercise using this one tool. I'm not here to tell you that's going to replace all the tools, but it just makes Photoshop a lot easier for new users. Um, the other tools are still very important, but this one can just save you a lot of time, especially with images that have like a like a white background like this one, because look how easy it is. You just roll the mouse on top of it. It's using AI technology. You all know what how AI is. Uh, kind of revolutionizing everything around us. So this is how AI works in Photoshop. You, and um, this is aside from generating images and stuff like that. But if you roll over this, look, it just highlights it for you and it's asking you if you want to select that. How cool is that? It's like a direct selection tool. So as soon as you acknowledge it and press OK, it'll select it for you. And now this becomes a selection. It's sort of me doing rectangular, magic wand, option click. This thing just incredibly selects everything for us. Now, it didn't maybe do everything. You still have to go in there and maybe, oh, it did get the white parts. Maybe it missed this part here and there. You still have to fine tune it. But regardless, it did a pretty good job, like 90% of the job. Another way, if this doesn't work for you, the way this, this tool works is you have to somewhat sometimes do this, surround the target. 
as soon as you let go, it'll capture whatever pixels are within the white background. So it's a pretty, pretty um, accurate type of um, selection method that targets the pixels. And again, copy and paste. Okay, grab this one here, move it around. So it would not be fair for me not to show you that because these tools came out after this exercise. And I still believe in this exercise because it teaches you so many important fundamentals of the software. And to add a few new ones that came along, it presents the opportunity as well because you can see how it works really nicely. Okay, so these two tools are really good. Uh, especially this one here, the object selection tool. This one, this one was around. Okay, these were around this exercise. This one came after; it's new. So this one came maybe two years ago, or last year. So object selection tool, really, really powerful. Okay, and the only one that we haven't covered in this exercise because we covered all of them is this one here. This one came like just recently, like this year, probably like two months ago. The selection brush tool. This one I can save it for next time because we're going to use it in quick masking because it's a good quick mask addition. But just to exploit it a bit, I'm going to select it here, make the brush smaller, go to the background layer, and just do oh, it's like a painting. You paint and you press enter. Then you press Q. Add or subtract. So basically, it works adding and subtracting. I'm trying to figure this thing out here. I'll be honest with you. I used it once and I forgot how you apply the actual effect. I think you please press enter. Oh, there's the color. Mm -hmm. Anyways, we'll, we'll cover this tool, okay? I'm just. Um, I'm just going to erase it now here. So option is add, shift to subtract. Okay, let me just roll over for a second. I think I have to use the menu, and I haven't. I don't have it visible there. So you surround it. Oh, for trackpad users, okay. Oh, it's for the generating fill, okay? And for adding, it's for um, ideal for track by for adding and removing content with generated fill, okay? So we're gonna get into that another time. I'll show you some generate. That's like AI stuff, okay? So I didn't. I thought it was more selection induced, but no, that's fine. It's for AI, and it's good for adding or subtracting. Uh, artificially generated images and we're going to cover that later because this is all new stuff with AI that's came out like last year basically with chat GPT and all these other things so I thought maybe we could use it with the selection but I think it's for for the other one because I don't see any application of this uh, it's not like quick masking right the quick masking is another thing we'll cover in the next weeks okay so we'll leave that alone all right, but besides all that, I think we covered a good deal of uh, important material here, especially the selections, uh, elliptical, marquee, in conjunction with uh, you know the quick selection tool, magic wand, and the new one that was introduced a few years ago, object selection tool. We saw that works really like magical with the way it selected stuff, uh, as well as the lasso tool, the polygonal, and the magnetic lasso tool. So once you master these tools, you can do pretty much anything in terms of assembly as a montage in Photoshop. And um, this is how we're going to um, create some of these creative designs. A lot of stuff you see the professional use Photoshop. Uh, they do a lot of these techniques in a more you know, profound way of um, assembling pretty much anything with effects and lighting and colors and all these different different techniques. So I'll master this and you definitely will have a good understanding of the software. And going forward, we're going to utilize other methods on top of this. So these methods, we're going to use them over and over again. So if you don't understand them yet, don't worry, because we have a whole semester ahead of us to learn them as we use them every day with different things. But this was pretty good because we ended up with at least a dozen layers 
capturing all these different um, fruits and vegetables that we have created and pasted them on top of this melon head. So what I'm going to do now is ask you to um, maybe hide the background layer. And I'm going to ask you to crop this image and save it as a final composition or a final assembly. So you're going to use the crop tool, which is located right underneath here. If you press C on the keyboard, you get to select the crop tool as well. I'm going to grab the corner or the side, simply crop the image. This is called cropping, which means you're you're selecting an area you want to constrain and 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 keep. The rest of the stuff gets isolated or deleted. So be careful when you do this because once it's done, it's done, right? Press enter to acknowledge the uh, the transformation. I want you to go to file, save as. Don't save over the existing one because that's a very you know, basic starting exercise. Rather than we're saving a different version, a finished version at that. So we're going to go save as. Selecting start, I'm going to rename start and call it finish. OK, so finished. Version. Into the same folder as the one I asked you to download before we started this exercise. We're saving it as a Photoshop document and we're going to hit save. Now I want to see everyone's melon head creation because I think they're all going to look different and cool. So for you to put this onto our discussion group chat, the, the, the exercise chat that I have created for us today. And I said, we're going to do this from time to time. Some classes, we're not going to do a, you know, a group selected uh, or a group challenge. For this one, I want you to upload this version. And if you don't have it done, don't worry. You can do it whenever you get a chance to finish it. Just do it by, you know, in the next few days or so, okay? So you're going to go file, save a copy. Now, save a copy is different than save as because save as gives you all the all the native and important formats for Photoshop to use. When you save a copy, you can access all the miscellaneous and main formats as well. So you can basically go to PNG, which stands for Portable Network Graphic Format. It gives you the transparency option, and it's good for websites and stuff. You can make a logo and keep it transparent. Whereas JPEGs don't do transparency. JPEG is good for photographs and images. That if you notice your photos on your on your phone, on your mobile device, a lot of them have uh, by default it's JPEG. So PNG is only for like transparency and more specialized type of images. I know the Mac even captures PNGs by default when you do a screen capture like Command Shift three or four. So just keep this as PNG. We're gonna hit save. And we're going to go large uh, file size. And basically what's going to happen is when you when you uh, open your folder, you're going to see there's a PNG and there's a Photoshop file and the PNG will be a transparent. You see, it'll be a transparent document. So it keeps it transparent. So is the Photoshop file. Uh, the Photoshop file is, is quite large because it look Photoshop file retains all your layers. So if you have to ever come here and do some arrangements, you can. That's why you have to keep the Photoshop file. Always, always save the Photoshop file first. As a matter of fact, you might have a few copies of it backed up. Maybe, you know, mid-level, end-level, whatever level of your of your workload you happen to work on. Um, but the PNG file is something you 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 spit out, as they say, and you you share in social media, you show your clients, your colleagues, right? You never ever give people your Photoshop file, except us, of course, because I have to grade your assignments and, and look at your layers. But when you when you give work out to um, other people, you give them a PNG, a JPEG, because when they open this, you know, they're only going to see a picture of it. They're not going to see your layers, obviously, because they don't have Photoshop. Even if you open this in Photoshop, the PNG does not retain the layer information, and neither does a JPEG. Photoshop is the only format that keeps all this, and you need that for your own sake of editing and keeping that as a work work format. Same as Illustrator, same as InDesign. In InDesign, you create PDFs, and the PDFs become your brochure, business card, whatever stationery you might produce. In Illustrator, same thing, you produce PDFs, 
SVG files for websites now with logos, EPS files, which stands for Encapsulated Postscript, for promotional items like hats, mugs, shirts, stuff like that, right? You never ever give somebody like an Illustrator file or a Photoshop file unless they request it. Like I remember doing that, some kind of promotional stuff for a company, and they wanted me to give them the Illustrator or the Photoshop files because they had to translate them in French. As you know, in Canada, we're a bilingual country. By law, we had to have a lot of our medical licenses and stuff. Everything that we did in terms of marketing had to have translations on it. So we had to submit the work formats for that reason. Otherwise, if you're going to print something or put something on a website, it is what it is. You don't have to have the layers there, nor you can put that on a website. It's not recognizable. Like, you know, I don't think Instagram will let you even upload a Photoshop file, right? Has to be a JPEG, PNG, something that it'll, it'll work with. Hence why we're creating these other, you know, uh, substitute files for that reason. Even the file size, if you compare a Photoshop file size, this is like 1.1 megabytes. And if you compare a PNG file size, which is 200 kilobytes, the difference is... A lot, right? It's like 80% less, basically, right? Um, so watch this. one. So let's compare it in bytes. Because 1.1 megabytes, for those of you who don't know megabytes and bytes and bits, 1.1 mega, megabytes is 1,105,083 bytes. So let's just round it off to 1.1 million bytes. The PNG is only 200,000 bytes. So if you compare 200,000 to a million, that's that's a big difference, right? So that's why websites prefer you give them PNGs and JPEGs and things like that. So they're not in megabytes. Most images are in kilobytes. Now, high resolution images that you take, and this is what we'll discuss in Photoshop when you do high definition images and resolution, you, you get into like 2K, 4K, that's like thousands of pixels. The more pixels, the better the quality of the image. So when you when you capture photos with your phone, especially the new phones now, like the one I got, I think a 50 megapixel camera on, on a phone, right? So that's pretty good. And then you have the lenses, the traditional cameras, and they capture a lot of good lighting and a and a good aperture and a good good photo. And those are good quality pictures to use on on um, anything, right? Websites, print, especially for print, you need a high quality photograph. So we'll get into this bits and bytes later, but just for now, you're aware of it. This is what we're comparing Photoshop versus PNG files. And we're not worried about the file sizes just yet because we're just kind of working with what we have. So I want you to upload the PNG file. So I'm going to hit option drag. Look, I'm using option drag on the Mac to copy this to my desktop. Because if I didn't hold option drag, I would have moved it. See, so hold option on the PC. I think it's control, control drag to copy. OK. You're going to go under our discussion group, which is our. Melon selection exercise here. And we're going to upload this while well, I already have one. Oh, look, Mary already uploaded hers. And so did Jasmine, and so did um, Alleghenian, and then I guess the rest of you will do it soon as well. And if I want to do mine, I can just upload it as well. This is the one I did last time, I think. Looks similar to, to the other one. Okay, so I encourage all of you to, to upload your files, please, and so I can see your melon exercise. And I think that's it for today. We're going to wrap it up. Um, it's been a fun class as always. Let's uh, continue the momentum. Uh, what I want you to think about now, since you have the assignment due today as well, the one from last week, so make sure that's already done. Um, again, going to calendar, you can see you know, the due dates for all the projects. You can also go to a grade book that also is a good way to track what's due, right? As we talked about earlier, the color abstract exercise. If you click on that, you can see it's due like today is the 12th, right? So you can uh, upload that one. The next one is the movie poster. So I want to talk a bit about that before we end the lesson.
And next week we'll dive more into it and you can kind of at least get a thought and think about it. So the movie poster project is something that will cover the print aspect of the application Photoshop, as well as incorporating all the methods you're learning with me in the lessons, like selections and layers and all kinds of nice things. So this is due on the 2nd of October. So it is due like in maybe like three weeks. I might do an extension of this one. I'm not sure about the due date. I'll see how everyone is at. I do have a big group of students, so sometimes I go by that as well. Uh, so for this project, I want you to start thinking about it. You'll be designing a poster, okay? Now, look, a lot of posters back in the day, we used to print them. Now you have like all these other subscription movies like Netflix and Amazon Prime. A lot of these posters are digital posters now. I still want you to keep it traditional in the traditional sense. Because if you go by the, let's say you drive by the corner on the on the bus stop, on the booth itself, you see something printed, whether digital or not, it's still large format. So they still print posters and display them in large format. Large format's never going to die out, right? You're not going to see the traditional posters perhaps, but if it's good resolution and good quality, you can always scale it up and produce a digital poster. So by you following these requirements here, you can not only produce a printed poster, but it can also be a digital poster because of the 300 DPI resolution. And we're going to get into this a little more next week. And I'm, what that means is the more resolution, the better the pixels that they're captured within that square inch of space. So let's think about the movie poster project for next week, at least get an idea you're going to be designing a poster which will promote an event or a movie that might be showcasing in the near future, okay? So something that you kind of think that's happening, like Toronto Film Festival is happening right now. Maybe it's a little too late for that. But let's say you did want to create a movie poster for the for that event. You can, you can, right? Let's say you have your favorite movie that's coming out this fall or this winter. You can create a poster for that as well. Um, let's say whether it's an event or a movie, um, pretty much those are the two main categories. You will then utilize all of the main Photoshop uh, Creative Cloud application tools for image editing and background textures alongside other design methods to complement the overall presentation. You may also incorporate Illustrator for logos, type treatment, and page layout design. So I'd like you to some, not only think about Photoshop, in, a, in another project you're going to get in the other class, you will have a collaborate project, which means you're going to do a project that's going to be split into all three classes. So in Illustrator, you might do the typography or the title or the or the you know the main logo for the for the poster. In InDesign, you're going to do the layout. In Photoshop, you're going to produce the images and the montage. So you're going to use three applications to get a job done. And in the real industry, that's how things are done. You're not going to use Photoshop for everything or Illustrator or InDesign. You're going to use all three programs equally, maybe one more than the other, depending on the job. But all three applications are incorporated at, at once, right? Like I'll show you some of my projects like catalogs and stuff. All my EPS files are done in Illustrator. All my images are prepared in Photoshop. All my layouts are done in InDesign because I'm using like maybe 120 pages. And that's how we do all this stuff together. So for the poster, I don't want you to think about that. It's all Photoshop. The only thing in Illustrator, you might want to do like type on a path or something more vector and stuff. You could use, you may also, you don't have to. Okay, if you want to just... Some people love Illustrator and illustrations. You can if you see fit. If you don't, don't worry about it. You don't have to use Illustrator, okay? So check out the criteria points below to get a better understanding of the breakdown. So I want to see a minimum of five different image sources. That's a minimum. That means you have to have at least five. Maximum, you go up to 50. It's up to you. Don't always think more is better. It's just depending on how you're going to intertwine everything. Technical uses include like clipping masks layer masks and quick masks so these are the meth methods we're going to learn in the upcoming weeks as well as selections of course because you can't do this without what we did today so selections is the key and then we're going to move on to clipping masks layer masks and quick masks. it all has to do with selections okay so don't let these terms kind of intimidate you because maybe you're not familiar with them just yet 
Other suggested items include symbols and layer styles or layer effects. We're going to learn that as well. Okay, so all this stuff we're going to learn in the next few weeks, and you're going to be able to produce a printed movie poster for this um, for this assignment. Or actually, let's call it a, it's a project. Actually, uh, projects are weighted a little more than assignments. That's why they're different. So October 2nd, okay? So maybe I'll push this off till the end of the week. If it's a Thursday, maybe I'll give you another day extension if I feel like it, but I'll see how everyone feels and how we're moving along, how fast. But as it is right now, I think we have a pretty good pretty good timeline for this. You should do this in a few weeks, no problem. Especially after next week's class, you should be more familiar with putting this together. Look how we put the melon together. Just copy and paste different things and just the mock-up the color mode is going to be cmyk because we're our intention is to print the poster and the only way to print is to use the cmyk mode the resolution is 300 this is the industry standard high print resolution if you use anything less than 300 you're compromising quality so we're always going to get images at high resolution and there's a lot of image websites for free like unsplash and pexels and pixabay to get some of these images as well the size is 11 by 17. this is going to be a good poster size why did i choose this size because it's um, you can print it at your conventional printer at home and mount it and put it in your portfolio although posters are bigger they're like 22 by 28 or 32 by 24 there's different sizes for posters i just kept it to this size so it's not astronomically big and it won't crash your computers file management photoshop to pdf so you're going to learn how to create a photoshop file and create a pdf for the final presentation so you're going to do both talenthouse.com this let me just add some other stuff here i wanted to share with you this is a, a website that actually has competition for posters. And a lot of my students in the past did partake in this. And you can actually submit, let's say they're making a new Batman movie or something, and they want, it's a, a contest and students can participate and compete for like the grand prize. The grand prize is like $5,000. So I'm sure everyone can use a little $5,000 these days. It's a pretty good, uh, I don't know if it's still there though. I think they took it down. I don't think it's, um, in use anymore let's click on it anyways to see for creatives look page is not found i mean come on these guys were so big look what happened to them wow it's incredible eh they did some good work too like you should see the amount of work people were submitting. You no, know, see, like there you go, all these posters and stuff. If you see some other websites that do have, uh, you know, competitive, I haven't been in touch lately uh, with some of these things, but I know there's tons of stuff out there. If you see there's a competition for posters or something, I want to encourage you to participate in these things because as you're learning this stuff as a student, you can definitely submit your work to get rewarded um, even financially why not if if you can okay so keep an eye out for things this used to be the thing but not anymore so uh you know if i find something or you find something share it with your group share it with me and we can post it up there okay uh, one more thing i wanted to add was um some of the websites for you to um to access let me just switch to my view here. Because you're going to be looking for different images you want to be creating. So. Maybe I'll just give you the links to these websites here. Um, 
they should still be functional, most of them. So maybe I'll do so, I'll put this on the resources so you'll have access to it. Let me go to resources here. Always good to add more resources, right? So we're going to do, um, we're going to create a link. I'm going to make it visible to you. This is a uh, Pixabay for images. Pixabay.com. So there's a lot of royalty free images you can use. Just make sure you, you know, contribute something to these, you know, these photographers, they deserve a lot of credit for taking these stunning photos. Give them um, maybe share, share their, um, go to their Instagram and like their stuff or whatever they want you to do. Do a minimal contribution at least, right? So you support all the artists, you know, you're an artist too. So it's good to have uh, the support that they need. Uh, so this is uh, Pixabay for images. Just uh, I'm gonna add another one in here. The other one will be um axles. Axels.com, okay, another great website for resources. Mm -hmm. Let's see, click here. Okay, so Paxels.com. Just going to copy and paste this so not to do it again. And one more, okay, I'll put one more up there for you. And this will be. Um, Unsplash, a very popular one. I'm sure you probably know of Unsplash. Images and they'll be Unsplash. If you know, do you guys know any other ones that are kind of like free and popular and stuff and good? If you know, let me know. Put them on. Put them. Put it on the um, on the chat or in our group. Do you guys have a? Do you have like a um, a class group already created? Maybe with WhatsApp or something. You can share a lot of information there. Uh, we can also do it for your classmates or whatever. Okay, unsplash.com. There we go. So you have all these different links under resources. All our stuff's going to be under resources. So if you go down there. Uh, there's Pexels, Unsplash, and Pixabay, a great resource websites to get, you know, royalty-free images and good quality images. You can't go to Google and get stuff. It's just not the same anymore, right? So make sure you do that for this poster. Next week, I'll show you some samples from previous students of what they did for the poster. Would you like to see that? Yeah. Yes. Sure. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so I'm going to do that next week. I'm sure the other professors uh, did the same thing. They they shared some student samples with you, and I'll be more than happy to do the same thing. Eric, do you have a question? I do about the the color abstract. So, so like after you saw it on the chat, do I have to redo it or just going to hand it in? Yeah, so good question, Eric. Um, Honestly, you can just submit the same thing you did. That's okay. Because honestly, these are little exercises that I'm marking students for, you know, following protocol and handing in assignments on time, things like that. The project's a little more subjective with creativity, technical execution, presentation, and criteria and other things. So yes, okay? You can use the same one. If you want to challenge yourself and do something different, that's fine too. Okay? okay. No problem. I, I think question. the only mm -hmm. difference might have been the size, right? For the assignment, you changed the size, perhaps? That's a very good point, Danielle. Does I that did, matter? 
you know what? Honestly, I'll no, it doesn't matter. I because okay. I did a thousand by thousand on the on the demonstration, yeah. although the uh, the actual um, criteria for this assignment was here. Let's go under grade book here. You can see here. Um, Right, eight by eight inches, artboard size RGB. If you did yours a thousand pixels, that's fine. I'm, I'm not gonna discount you for that. Okay. Thanks. Very good. Yeah, I guess everyone's paying attention. Very good. Because on top of things, I like that. Any other questions? Okay, so I guess I'll wrap it up for today. Then I'm gonna stop the recording and stop sharing my screen. Um, thank you for joining me again. Nice to see you all back and I will see you uh, in the next class. All right. So uh, take care and have a good have a good weekend. It's almost Thursday. Friday is tomorrow. And bye for now. Bye. Thank you very thank much. You. Bye. bye bye. Take care. And put your picture up there. OK, I want to see your pictures next week so I can see what you know, so we can be a little more face to face. All right.